This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com, use the code SHOW20 for 20% off and free shipping. Now, after using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Not to worry, this bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, even in the ocean. Personally, I love this thing because it comes with a compact case. I take it wherever I go, and spring cleaning doesn't just have to apply to your nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit and Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOW20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOW20 at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Hello everyone and welcome to the FM show. I am your host Tony Jameson. Joining me as always is RDF Tactics aka Aaron Falloon. But Aaron, today we've got ourselves an international guest. Yes, we do. And he will not let time zones get in the way <laughs> <laughs> of a good podcast. Everybody say hello to our Tactics Sensei, Bust the Net, Dalgett. How are you, pal? Oh, it's four (laughs) o'clock. I am doing well as anyone can be at four (laughs) o'clock in the morning. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. We're very good. We're very good. We will, yeah, we'll 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 go, we'll break the fourth wall at this point, right? So it's (laughs) in the UK, it's currently eight o'clock Saturday evening. Okay. That's what it is for us. And we're like both of you know, Aaron and I, we both got the kids down for bed. We finished our dinner. And it's like, right, let's get on. Let's record a show. Dalgit, of course, is in Singapore. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a different time zone to what we're working with. Yes. Um, yeah. Normally, at this time, most of us are hammered, drunk, walking into walls. Uh, yeah. So I'm lucky. You're lucky. You got me in a night when I decided to go to bed early. Right, well, well, we we appreciate that. We appreciate that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I couldn't pass up the opportunity, like, you know, to hang with you guys. <sighs> oh, do you know what I mean? He knows how, he knows how to pour us up, doesn't he? Like, he knows how to do it. Um, so, so I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a couple of sort of like, how is everyone, first of all? So, Aaron, Aaron, what have you been up to this week, man? How's the uh, how's the tactics videos flying? I'm fuming, to be honest. So, not the not football manager uh, reasons, <laughs> Panini sticker reasons. <laughs> So, <laughs> admittedly, I've got a bit of a problem. So, uh, an episode or two before, I spoke about panini stickers and how often should you actually be buying them. And yeah, I've got this habit of buying three at a time. So, today I came back from um, coaching, just bought three stickers. Yesterday, I went to the shop, bought back three stickers for my boy. But I feel we're getting ripped off because now we're getting so many doubles. It is ridiculous. We've got a stack of double stickers and it's like, you only get five in the pack anyway. If we added all of those packs, there's like five worth of stickers, five packs worth of stickers there. So I'm fuming. He opened his uh, pack today and then it was, he got his last sticker and he was like, I'm hoping, it's got this bad, he's like, I'm hoping this is not a double. I'm hoping it's not a double. <laughs> and he was heartbroken when it was a double. So yeah, I'm fuming with Panini at the moment. <laughs> oh man, oh, Dal- D- Dalja, do you remember this? Like the old, the old sticker collections, like we used to do that like back in the day and like, just I, I, Aaron's right, like that that absolute 
horror show where you open and we mentioned on the last podcast it used to be six stickers in a packet now yeah. it's five which That's is five, you know yeah. horrific um, <laughs> but yeah getting that five pack and then just going like oh they all go on the swap pile that's yeah it's just not good is it you're throwing money away at this point Alger. um yeah <laughs> i went i went through that phase but it didn't last long until my mom just dis- discovered where all my pocket money was going and then she <laughs> quickly started chasing me around the house with a broomstick yeah so that that little hobby ended really early in my life oh man yeah i i used to do it but i was like similar so i'm like this with fantasy football actually it's like the first week or two it's like it's banging like i'm so into it and then you just forget about it but my boy he's he won't he would never forget about the sticker but now it's his forever but he's yeah he's it was he's a bit heartbroken, which of course leaves me a bit heartbroken as well. So Panini, uh, I am on you. At the age when they're that young, kids are naturally going to be into stickers. My son comes home every yeah, day with yeah, stickers, yeah. so yeah, they're going to stick yeah. everything. The thing about stickers is they end up all the way house eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's another they, thing because at, at coaching, <laughs> so at the end of at the end of the sessions at coaching, we give out stickers, and it's like the whole coaching session. You're trying to get them to pay attention. The moment you say right sticker time, all of a sudden they're all running, sitting down, <laughs> listening, and they're like, "Oh come on!" All for a little animal sticker. <laughs> they love it though. They yeah, do love like, it. Like, honestly, like I've got to clean the office down before we hit record <laughs> on the cameras because there's usually stickers all up on that back shelf there. <laughs> or the youngest one likes to put. He likes to put whatever work he's made that day. Like it might be Lego, it might be little <laughs> animals or something. Or um, what's he got? These these minute these little sort of like um, little tiny beads that he puts on oh, a yeah, piece yeah. of plastic that you can iron. Oh I've yeah, yeah. Them flowers and everything, and they were all like lined oh, up on the on the desk the other day. So I was like, right, I need to move all them off because I've got to go and go and make the <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah. But when we stream, he puts them on there and he goes, just so your friends can see them. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know what? Fine, they stay on. Yeah, they yeah, stay yeah leave it. <laughs> For all those guys who don't have kids yet, just remember this: it's a really cheap birthday present. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it was, but they're bloody a pound a pack now. So yeah. I don't know. We're not talking panini. We're talking any sticker. You just go there, you know, go to a shop, you find a pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like yeah. a star or something. Or yeah. Like a cloud. Yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah, to be fair, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> now, the thing is, though, right, and I know this is like, we're on a football manager podcast, but we're opening up talking <laughs> about stickers. But I feel like we have to get this off our chest as well. Because you're right, we mentioned last week, I was like, I, have, I don't want to have to fall into the trap of the Euros stickers oh yes i'm 44 i'm trying to resist doing it right but i remember okay i remember way back and this was like one of the best things i remember from being a kid was they had a italian 90 this is how far back i'm going italian 90 (laughs) they had this um this binder where you could buy a thing every single week and it was like and it was like all about international football and like you could sort of like look back at previous world cups and you could look at like maradona's goal against england and like, they drew it all like where they like, scored yeah, that, yeah, that brilliant yeah. dribble and like mm. and just sort of discussing like how, how the dutch team were and what they'd set up and like this is what italy looked like and oh cameroon looked really tasty they're interesting different and i was like oh it properly got me in and it was about I, I didn't want to guess how much the price was. It was like, like a pound or something for the first yeah, one yeah, yeah. with the binder. And then you go, actually, this is like 90 episodes deep. And it, the, yeah, the yeah. first one's a pound. The second one's five quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But I do wonder, though, maybe they are about now. We just don't see it. But I do wonder if that's sort of like what's great. Not that, but what creates a, like a disconnect with the young people and international football as well. Because I don't feel there's enough passion in international football. Like when I was a child, it was like, it was a thing. And you couldn't wait to see teams like Brazil, France and England play on TV. Now it's like international break. Oh, goodness. Well, <laughs> so I mean, to be honest, if you've been on Twitter this week, people, people have oh, yeah, much yeah, an opinion about yeah, international yeah, football okay, yeah. shirts, um, yeah. but not necessarily um, <laughs> about the international break. But yeah, like, I mean, what's, what's it like over in Asia? Like for us over in Europe, like the international break is just dull. But I should say uh, today at the time of recording, the beauty of international football break is today is non-league day. So that's pretty good. So like non-league yeah. clubs also yeah, like try yeah, and, yeah. and gather around and say, there's no football, Premier League or, or top flight. Come and, and, and experience non-league football. So anyone who went to non-league football today, massive shout out to you. Uh, I'm hope you enjoyed it and hope you'll go back again. But um, but what's 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 non what's uh, international football like in Asia? Is it 
that big thing or is it just like oh god the league's not here again it depends on which country you look at i mean like mm. um malaysia is a big thing right now because football is back on the up they just played oman and they've been doing quite well internationally so they've moved up in the mm. rankings in singapore it's a different story in singapore we in the coffin um our results <laughs> have been pathetic mm. so singaporeans as a whole they probably not so interested in the international football scene but it depends on which country you go to. Yeah, so yeah, different yeah. countries. There's the Indonesia is passionate about the international football. Mm -hmm. um, so regionally, it depends on a nation. And I think in the Asians are football crazy. I mean, mm, they yeah, are. Yeah. So they're gonna follow their national teams. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of like you know, yeah, everybody's probably getting a bit bored of the fact that there's no EPL or there's no club football <laughs> but then again yeah we're okay we do we'll do yeah, all right yeah, yeah. Mm, okay nice. cool 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 well i tell you what, before we get into all of the the chat that we're going to have there might be some people out here uh Dalja, who don't know you and don't know what you do and, and your your um sort of like connection to football manager so if you want to break down the cv then sort of explain who you are and and, and why, why you're with us wow who am I? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a philosophical and, and Aaron, question. Aaron and I school. can put our feet up for about 20 minutes while you go through this. <laughs> it's like, you check out into the classroom, please stand up and talk about yourself. I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, most people probably recognize me as Rashidi from the forums, the training and tactics moderator. But of course, I don't really start with that nowadays because it's... Uh, I also have like a YouTube channel and Twitch channel, and I've been doing guides, writing guides since the days of Championship Manager. Um, some people probably remember me back from the days of the the era of the Super Tactics when we had like mm -hmm. Diablos and Scramjets. Diablo. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and then everyone uh, remembers Diablo. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got like things like. Yeah, I, I've been involved in the game for many, many years, writing guides and stuff and helping people out generally. Yeah. So that's, and yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Nothing much. I mean, yeah. Nice. Nothing much. Nothing, nothing much. I was going to say nothing There's much. There's one to sell himself. <laughs> nothing <happened>. much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad like, you yeah, yeah, I, I had nice. I was like, wait, what did you just say? Nothing much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I look, I, when I started, I was in uni. And so back in the uni days, it was a thing to break the game, right? So when I broke the game, it appeared in the newspapers. Um, SI called me up. <laughs> SI <laughs> said, whoa, okay, can you send us your tactic? And that was a long time ago. So now when you're older, you're not so into that. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, now... 20 years ago, you asked me, yeah, I'll be out break, breaking the game. I want to break the game. I just want to smash it. Yeah. But yeah, now, yeah. now I'm much older and I'm like, yeah, you know, this game, it's all about the fun yeah. factor. Let's have some fun. Enjoy <laughs> yourselves. It's got bugs, but I live with yeah. bugs. I wish for the next time I go on a run, I wish SI just replied that back to me. <laughs> hey, this isn't as bad. Okay, listen, listen, listen. At least, at least SI responds to bug reports. Okay, I'm yeah. going to come out here and put my hand up and say, they respond to bug reports. If your game crashes, you go to the forums tomorrow and you say, my yeah, game yeah. crashes, there's going to be somebody out there who's going to do a one-on-one -on -one with you <laughs> and solve your problem. And they even invite you onto an alpha in case your computer happens to be a dinosaur trying to play football manager. They're going to they're gonna invite you. Okay, That's how good they are. This compares differently to Baldur's Gate. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to say this because I play Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I tried oh, yeah. to. I was in the early, early access. But since early access and every single patch, I haven't been able to log on. It crashes all the Jeez. time. So every time I turn the game on, it crashes with this little message that says, send a report. And I keep sending reports. I've been sending reports since November. They contacted me. After months of back and forth trying to help me out, the advice from their technical help desk was, would you like to try another game from our series? Maybe wow. Baldur's Gate won't work for you. Wow. <laughs> okay, look. <laughs> right. When you get a message like that, 
If you ask yourself, <laughs> oh, I've got a game on my machine that I can't play, and their solution is, would you like another from our stable? Right, that's like, mental. If you get that from Tesco's, right, you're doing your delivery, and you've ordered tomatoes, and they go, we haven't got cherry tomatoes, would you like plum tomatoes? You go, all right, fair enough, right, because that's tomatoes. <laughs> but not if you've bought a video game and go, oh, do you want to try a different game? Because this one's really ain't working for you. Come on. It's just so weird. <laughs> It's just like you can't, you can never put that nicely. There's just no way of putting that one nicely. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, the game has its its issues, right? I mean, look, yeah. got it. I've, 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 I've had to moan about the UI for many, many years. Like goalkeepers, how come goalkeepers get assist stats? If you go to a page on the goalkeepers, you see assists, you know, goals. Uh, yeah. And you get a stats for finishing, and I'm like. Why? I mean, I've raised this for many years, but after a while you go like, okay, maybe in the list of other priorities, this isn't very high because I mean, how many people actually go to that page and check the bottom of the page for that, you know, that little <laughs> small little graphic? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's like not many people are going to be looking for assists when they're looking at a goalkeeper. So yeah, I exactly. Guess, yeah. I think they've got bigger fish to fry. Like for me, it's probably going to be other features of the game that need to, they need to address before FM25. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. But I'm, it's, it was, it's similar with me though, because when I, so I've been playing Football Manager for a long time, but it's when I got to content creating, it was about that. Oh, I need to get the next, the next tactic that's gonna work for everyone, sort of thing. And it wasn't really thinking about how it's gonna help people. It was just, I, I need, I need to be the guy with the most banging four three three out there, and that's mm. what kind of was. And then it got to like after year one. Then it kind of got not boring, but it wasn't challenging as in I wasn't challenging other people. They all just coming to me, get the tactic and go. But then now it's more like, what? Well, maybe I can just help these people create a tactic themselves. And then because I can't see their team, I can't see their players, whatever. And this is always the issue. This is what the issue I had before. It was like they'll download the tactic. Oh, it don't work for me, which is like the worst comment on mm. YouTube because I can't see anything. Like you're just saying these things. And then if I reply back, like, oh, it might be your team, then it comes up, it could come off a bit snarky, like, I'm saying my tactic's perfect, it can't be down to the tactic, it has to be down to you sort of thing. So it's like one of those comments that I hate. So now when I do videos, it's always about breaking down and how I created it. And then you can take a tip or two off it. I always give you a download link, but that's just download if you want to do it. I'll never be like, hey, download this and you get the same thing. It's like, this is how I created a tactic using player instructions. You could do the same. This is how I do hybrid pressing. You could do the same in your 4-3-3 or whatever system you have. So yeah, yeah. similar similar sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, I think, agree. Yeah, I think it's sort of like, it's it's interesting. Like you've, you've touched on it on a great point, Dalja, and it's a point that I kind of try and bang the drum as much as I can. Um, with, with people like like we're quite fortunate with with you know this podcast for example right we know that we attract and we say this all the time we attract a wide variety of people as you do on stream as Aaron does with tactics you know we attract people who have just picked up the game for the first time ever and they're trying to learn the game and go through it as they go we've got people who just play three seasons as Real Madrid and Liverpool they win the Champions League and then that's them done they're happy with that and then we've got people who insist on finding you know semi-pro Sunday leagues in Latvia, like, and they want like 80 seasons on that. And that's their thing. So you can't please everybody all the time. That's yeah. pretty much impossible. Yeah. So you're saying there about, you know, you're going through this, this initial thing of breaking the game when you were younger. And I get that. I completely get that. The idea of you, you're brand new in the game. You're like I want to win as much as I can, win as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like yourself now, like, you know, I'm in my forties and I'm going, I'm just playing for fun, like especially when I'm streaming. For me, it's just yeah, not fun. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't need to win. Like I'm, sure I can if I want to. I can, but I'm not desperate to win. I don't want to be, you know. Aaron is the guy who can win the Champions League by accident. Like you know, that, that's amazing. <laughs> I want people in my stream going, "Oh, he's bottled it again." Ten years without yeah, trophies. Yeah, yeah. I, mean? <laughs> I want that. That's what I love. Yeah, I think the days. Okay. This actually goes back to, I mean, if you want to bear with me for a while, because um, in the when the game first came out, it was all about download this tactic and go win, rinse, mm -hmm. repeat. I mean, you could literally put in a tactic and then go have coffee, come back, maybe dinner, meal, <laughs> and then come back, holiday mode, come back. Oh, God, I want yeah, the title. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, yeah. have to do anything. Because, I mean, those days the game would process really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Today, then as I re realized, right, okay, we want to make the game a bit more challenging for people. So they introduce more attributes. Then after that, they said, okay, fine. 
Uh, now we want to try and nerf all these uh, downloadable tactics, right? How what can we do? So over the last few years, and I've been working. I mean, since two thousand and sixteen, my goal has been really simple. I want people to understand the game, not just download the tactics. Like uh, my yeah. videos have always been. Look, this is how I create the tactic. Understand the process behind it so that you can go and mm. do it yourself. More like teach a person to fish than go fish for them. And yeah, yeah. now what I've noticed is SI, the game has also changed. Downloadable tactics aren't... A, you, you, you can't take a down tactic, download it, and hope it works because it's probably not going to work. Because in the game itself, the new features like positional play, the Whenever the AI changes a role or duty, it could completely drastically change their formation. That like way, yeah, yeah. anyway, go from a DM anchor and it changes to a roaming playmaker. They've got now one player that's going to move to three tiers. Change a winger against uh, you're playing against a back three. If you're if the AI is playing a winger, it changes to inside force. Now you got somebody attacking those central defenders. You got to do something about it. So mm -hmm. the game has evolved, and people. It's surprising because in the old days, what I used to find was um, it's harder to get the invincible achievement. Right? You know, oh, you know, man. Yo, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure there's something. I'm a conspiracy yeah. theorist, so that's why I talk like this. But I'm sure there's something coded in the game that stops the amount of times I've got to like. So there'll be like 34 games out of 38. You've, you've lost zero. Okay. You've got the title in the bag. And then you're going to lose against the team that's 16, 17, 18 for whatever it is. And the worst thing is sometimes as well, it's not even like it's a difficult game and it or like it was tight and they just sometimes you will just get battered. Like they'll just walk mm. over you, which will happen in football. You're not gonna be on form 38 games out of 38 games. Sometimes it might come later in the season for you and realize, okay, now we're gonna start losing as well. But I do realize in football manager, a lot of people ignore warning signs so mm -hmm. for an example they'll win six sub six one but their xg was only 1.98 but they might just ignore that and think oh we scored six goals anyway and we're going to continue that run but in that game you might have just scored four long shots or they might have not been high quality chance. you might have not even created great chances you just managed to score six goals in that game and people think that carries on when really that it won't really carry on you might go on a winning streak, three games, but it'll come to a point where your luck runs out, and then, then you have to. Then people start tweaking and going a bit reckless, or like some people do, they start quitting. <laughs> but it's a, it is one of those things that I do, I used to do it as well. Just ignore the winning signs. You're winning, don't change nothing. Why, why, mm. why change something when you're winning? But sometimes there are warning signs in the game that you should never ignore. Yeah, I had one uh, on my. Save last week. Um, I beat Olympiacos 4 0, battered Olympiacos, I should say. Sorry, um, <laughs> early in the season. A massive marker sat down going, Right, hey, I think we've, we're pretty decent. Us, we're 2 0 up after 20 minutes. We'd scored a, a pretty decent worked goal. We then scored a corner. We then scored a goal from a, a worked set piece. And then we got a, a, the final ball. They like, sort of finished it off. And I was like, Right, done. Like, yeah. we're here. We've arrived. Like, season 10 can begin. <laughs> Next match, we talked about this last week, Aaron, bogey teams uh, at Tremitos. Oh. We take a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes again. I'm like, same thing's happening, everyone. We're <laughs> in for another massive scoreline. We were because they then went 4-2 up. <laughs> 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 and we pulled it back to 4-3. We like They only had like 12 shots. I mean, we had 27. Like It was just one of those ones where yeah. no matter what I did defensively, they... We're already set. Like you know, you yeah, yeah. again. We mentioned it. You you got your subs all lined up, and then it goes in. And you're like, I'll just press cancel. Don't need that sub <laughs> now. It's, it's not going to make a difference. I did want to ask as well, Dalji. Do you think uh, the introduction to dynamics in the game as well is also sort of helping nerf in these these uh, plug and play tactics? Because of course, in everyone's game is going to be individual. Is going to be different. Mm. I could test the tactic with Liverpool. But then it gets to a certain stage where the team dynamic is so strong. Players know each other, even traits as well. Player traits, it's all like combined well. So I'm going to get certain results. Now, of course, Liverpool might not be a great example because they're a great team already, but then you might test that tactic at somewhere else and it might, it just wasn't, won't connect the same. Whereas I feel previously in Football Manager with a plug and play, it's literally just a plug and play. 
it doesn't matter who you are, <laughs> the sort of players as much, mm. like obviously you want a fast strike or whatever, but there's ways of getting a, getting past that sort of thing with a plug and play tactic. You just plug it in and you, it's, if it's a winnable tactic, it, you're going to win with it. But nowadays it's like, a good tactic will be a decent tactic, but there's going to be other, a lot more things contributing. It could be team dynamics. I feel player traits is a massive one that people just ignore as well. Mm. It's like, oh, your inside forward squad 40, mine should. Yeah, but yours doesn't cut inside and yours isn't strong with both feet and all of this stuff. Yeah. And these are the other things that people may miss as well with plug and play tactics nowadays. And I think these things mean more. Having the right players, and to making things right for the team and the tactic, I feel these things apply much more nowadays than it did ever before. Uh, well, me, um, okay. Thing about me is this, right? If anybody has come to my streams, they probably have noticed I don't pay attention to dynamics, and I never. Pay <laughs> I've, to no, I've noticed that. I've, not, <laughs> I've noticed that. I've seen other people notice as well. But I do think there's like a. So what I'm getting at is like. Maybe like over a course of a season. So there might be a tactic for someone that has scored like 130 goals mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Uh -huh. But you, it doesn't mean if that person's done it, it doesn't exactly mean you're going to get that result. And then yeah. there's other things in his save that might have connected in his save that might not be there in your save sort I think of thing. I think in most cases, it's this because I do a stream called Bring Your Tactics where I change yeah. tactics every single game. Every game. Every, every game, game, literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every, and the best part is, for the first 45 minutes, I let your tactic play out. And then... Yeah, think, and then you, then you start talking and changing it. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm there all the yeah, time. We've seen this. We've I'm seen literally this. there all the time. <laughs> so the thing is this, right? Even by changing tactics every single game, Atlanta finish second. Yeah. Mm. So the, here, this is where I think things like team dynamics and all the rest, they're not as important as you understanding the tactic first and then identifying oh, yeah, course, yeah. the right player for the position. So mm -hmm. I think what people might not be getting enough of is things like, when do you use a winger as opposed to an inside forward? Or is it more important for the role to be an advanced forward or a pressing forward? I think here... Here, I think the whole game today is more about putting all those pieces together into one whole. Even when it comes to the traits you mentioned, because traits are a tendency to do something. Not as a... Yeah. If you put in a play instruction, it's not a rule that's going to apply 100% of the time. Or a trait, it's not going to apply 100% of the time. So, I, I, you get this thing about when people come in, but I put in the cut... Play, oh, what is it? <laughs> Sit <laughs> narrow. <laughs> he's, he's sitting narrow and I'm going like, dude, seriously. I mean, it's a treat. It's a tendency. He will do it some of the time and not all the time. But I want him to do all the time. Then you go like, mm -hmm. do you expect the player to be a robot in the game? Because that's not has been designed. You know, these are supposed to... Well, football's not like that, though. Mm -hmm. Imperfections in human nature, right? Yeah, so, so I'm saying football's not like that. Football will have certain scenarios that's going to ask you, like Zinchenko might be inverted ring back, but there might be a scenario where he can't invert. It's going to be dangerous um, for the team. Yeah, so he's just going to stick in his left back position yeah. or whatever it is. Strike, strikers not attempting overhead kicks every single game, despite <laughs> the fact his trait says attempt How overhead dare you, kicks. Zlatan? How <laughs> dare you? Or, or the best part is uh, the player is holds position. He's not holding position. <laughs> and you go like. So the, the, here, I think this is what it boils down to at the end of the day. It boils down to people's understanding of because of the tactic, the logic. Because when you create a tactic like Aaron, you go out there, you make a tactic, you've got this in your head. I know what the transition is going to look like from back to front. I know yeah, how the yeah, goals yeah. are going to come. That's how I do it as well. But a person who downloads a tactic, does he think the same way? Does he know what his rest defense and his rest attack is going <sighs> to look like? Mm. Do you know what is... It's crazy because I did a video. So <laughs> I wanted to do one of those sort of rebuild videos, but it's not in my nature. So I I done this thing where like I simmed all the way to January and I've selected the team that was bottom, which happened to be ever earned. There were six points, of course, with a 10 point deduction. So then what the thing was going to that and then literally I'm just recording. It's just me. I don't know what the tactic is yet. And I'm just literally working it out as I'm recording it, blah, 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 blah. The video ended up being like an hour and a half. I can't do, can't release that. But it got to a point where like, I'm so my method, you get to see where I, so you got three tactic slots and then I would literally just open up another one and I'm trying to just move players and just seeing where 
if what things can happen. So if I've got a fullback on attack, I'll move him up forward slightly. Then I can see where I could be exposed if we lose the ball sort of thing. And I'm literally explaining it in the video like, okay, look, if we lose the ball here higher up, we've only got two centre-backs, that's too risky. So then I might want to have, have a half-back, for an example, in possession so he can drop back in to make it a back three. And then he might move forward slightly higher, but at, at least we've got that solid connection. Whereas if I should use a DM, he might go further forward and we might be exposed. And I was explaining that in the video, but these are the things sometimes I won't explain in a normal video, but it's things that people do miss. So they just get the tactic again, download it. Their, ta their team might be getting exposed on the counter, but they don't know what they're looking for. So again as well, again as well. So when you've got that download tactic and I, what you've done there is a great point. So you, you've taken a club midway through the season, like on this yeah. scenario, right? Yeah. In January transfer window. So you've already got your plug and play tactic. Okay. Now someone might be playing that game and they go, as you said there, you've got a, a defensive midfielder or they've got an anchor. Yeah. They go, right. I'm going to go and buy someone who's quite good at defensive midfield. They're not yeah. going to buy an anchor. They're going to buy someone who's quite good at defensive midfield. They're not buying the player that needs that that works. Yeah, in that that role. they need. Like, yeah, they're yeah. not understanding the exact attributes that would work for that. And you know what? That then allow a little bit of flexibility. So, say for example, he's not. He's an anchor. He's a bit too stationary. You might want him to be a halfback. You might want him to be yeah. a ball winner midfielder. Well, if you've not looked at all of his attributes, you might end up having to buy two or three players for that one <laughs> position. But you have worked out the tactic based on what you have in front of you. Yeah, yeah. The guy right now, if I can't replace him, he plays like this. And if yeah. he's injured, the next guy that comes in is going to play a slightly different role <laughs> because he's a slightly different player with slightly different attributes and a slightly yeah. different style. It's all about, as you say, this, this jigsaw effect, like collecting players who play slightly different things and go, right, what's my combinations? Am I playing two holding players? Am I playing two attacking players? Am I doing like, you know, double pivots? Am I, how many playmakers, how many attacking players am I going to look to commit today? It's, it's not a one size fits all anymore. And I think yeah. some people are struggling with that. I think maybe Dowger, I know Dowger has been big on this as well. And I think as well, partly it's not easy to understand everything. And mm. what I'm trying to get across as well, which I've, I've actually taken from Dowger is talking about these things are risk and you're, yeah, it's also about balancing risk. And now, like my last few videos, like you're gonna have balancing risk, balancing risk, balancing risk. So I'm like trying to literally drill it into people. So I've got in my video, I've got a halfback who holds his position, of course, holds position, and I can't remember the other thing. It might be dribble less or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So then I've got a Segundo Volante next to him who quite literally is the opposite. It's kind of countering, but it's balancing the risk. I've got one riskier who can carry the ball further forward and get further forward, whilst the other's going to hold his position and not really carry it, carry the ball forward. And it's not maybe it's not the perfect solution, but I'm just trying to drill into people's head about balancing risk and risk-taking and what mentality is risk as well. Like we say on the, on the show a lot, attacking doesn't mean you're going to play attacking football. What your roles are doing, the roles that you've chosen, the team instructions are all going to count as well. But it's also the complementary roles yeah. as well, isn't it? Like you can't just, for example, Del, you can't have two. Like, and we see this. I mean, you can. I'm about to to re argue <laughs> myself, right? Like you see these tactics where it's like, right, I've got a ball in a midfielder, double Mazala, double attack, advance forward, double wing back on attack, and you're like, football's not like that. You don't tell <laughs> your midfielder, right? You two are both Mazalas. We're a what now? Like, no, both. You're both doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you both should do that wrong. Yeah, both of you just just run out wide, like you know, just into the corners, like, like just leave the know. midfield exposed. Yeah, it's not like that anymore. Like, surely. I mean, like, I mean, only last week, Eric then hugged them Bruno Fernandez into a central defender. Mm. Yeah. So, so the thing is this, right? I mean, like, okay, there are several things here. Like, if you if you want to digest everything, first up, football, the football manager game has changed. Okay. In doing so, it's asking people to spend a bit more time thinking about all the parts before popping in the hole. I, you know, if you don't understand um, how a tactic, a mentality, and all the team instructions, the play instructions all work together, then you probably might have an issue. But it makes it easy because you now have the tactical creator, you've got some preset tactics, go pick one, go. And chances are, look, you don't have to be a complete 
I use this word a lot, so I hope people don't take offense. You got to be a complete <laughs> muppet to get it wrong, okay? Because yeah. I I do it. I mean, I I I don't mean it in a bad way, but I I've got players in my team that are muppets, so I use muppets everywhere. I mean, I'm a muppet. <laughs> I mean, like okay, the thing is this: and today, if you just keep things simple, like pick a tactic, they use again pressing. I don't care. The game does it for you as well. It's got this big thumb sign at the tactic going, pick me, pick me. <laughs> yeah. Then after that, as you go through the game, it goes like, these are the roles. Then all you got to do is go to the game and the game tells you, this is the best player for the role. I mean, it's that easy. So all you got to do is take it easy. What the game doesn't do, and this is where SI need to make a, you know, um, they need Explain to improve. Yeah, they need a glossary. They need a, mm. a th thing like, you know, go explain these terms to people so that they understand what player or defense means. So, yeah. prevent, like, for prevent, me, yeah. For me, that is, I'm sorry, but that's the most important thing. Even the, men the mentality thing, for me, yeah. I don't think it should be very defensive, defensive cautious. No. I think it should be telling us about the risk taken that is, that is taken. Because well, it's very difficult because people are just going to be like, I want to play Tiki Taka. I'm just going to go to control because it tells me basically just to use control sort of thing. And then people are trying to work around the roles. But then what they're doing is just adding pure... They're like, oh, Tiki Taka. So they've got positive. Then they start throwing in playmaker, this playmaker, that. Everyone's taking risk with their pull. And obviously with men control mentality as well, there's going to be a slight added risk from balance. So it's like... You're not really going to get how, why, why is Last Palmas got 60% possession? I've only got 39. It's like, well, because every time your center midfield gets the ball, he's trying to pop, <laughs> he's trying to pop a risky pass. So he's going to play it to someone else who's then going to play, play a risky pass. And it's, it's, yeah, it's one of those things. But people don't really, it's hard for people to really gather that and understand that. Why are you making a Barcelona tactic with, with a central midfielder? Because I can design that central midfielder the way I want him. I can have him re retain possession better than I'm using a different role. I guess it's a difficult thing, though, because what they've got, and again, as we, we've touched upon it earlier, like we've had people, we know, we've known people that have, that have started playing the game at the same time we've done, you know, yeah. 20, 30 years ago, and have now left the game because they say it's too complicated and it's it's not <laughs> straightforward and it's not, you know, the old days of of you switch it on your press space bar and it's and it's done. Yeah, like, yeah. You, know, you've, you now have the potential to do all this extra stuff you can customize pretty much everything within the team within the yeah. training facilities the schedules recruitment the lot you can however still just keep it incredibly simple if you don't know what you're doing and the barrier to entry looks quite scary but you can still get in as you Dalja says there's all the big thumbs up this is the one use this one like use this guy here like so is very defensive, is very attacking. Is that the most simplistic way to explain it to someone who doesn't know rather than using the terms that you might use, which is, you know, like, you know, rest defense or like sort of, you know, looking for like for your presses and stuff, like hybrid press. Like if you've got someone that's... who's coming in like at 15 or, you know, 25 or 30, they're just touching the game for the first time going, what the hell's bloody hybrid press? Like, you know, be like <laughs> is it? It's exactly why they need a glossary, though. It's exactly yeah. why they need a glossary in the game. But I then, think. but then at that point, are you losing some people? Just to play a devil's advocate, are yeah. you losing some people who will get the game for a bit of fun? Because numbers are going up. Numbers are going up. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people that play in this game. Do you then want to go, right, hey, welcome into Football Manager. Are you having fun? Well, here's the glossary you're going to need <laughs> to read before. Okay. But I think I think even now, though, I think the, football. the glossary thing applies now and even before. It, yeah. it's apply, it, the glossary thing, just, it's just, in my opinion, it's just needed. Because even the down to, like, the manual, I'm trying to go, like, so I've got this big thing of, like, I, I don't want to give out misinformation. I realise that now I've got this responsibility where people are coming for some sort of information tactically. So I don't want to be giving out wrong information what does high tempo actually mean and what what who it's affecting is in the game which said just something about operating in a quicker manner that yeah. doesn't really tell me much is that is that my center backs moving the ball quicker are that where where exactly is that are my players throwing the ball into the when it's throw-ins are they taking the corner quicker now as well because of course the game can get onto the 80th minute teams might naturally just slow the game down but maybe you want to play at a high tempo at all times so it, are you, like we don't exactly know what high tempo means and in, obviously the game manual doesn't help you much neither i think at the end Dalgy, of the day is this i think in the end of the day si will come up with a glossary they will yeah okay? I, I i suspect they're working on one right now yeah the thing is 
for SI, the challenge is how much do we how much do we reveal about the game? No developer wants yeah, to go there. I was going to say, I was just uh, going to say, yeah. I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. 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 They're not going to do yeah. that. Okay, and then you have to look at the numbers as well. Okay, I like this is the thing. Invincible season, maybe five years ago, 5% of the players had, did an invincible season, all right? Now, today, if you check the achievements, 17% of the player base has achieved Invincible season. And interestingly enough, a lot of people, you might hear of a lot of people talking and complaining about not being able to keep a clean sheet. 20% of the player base has got, no, 30% of the player base actually has departed the tank achievement where they've kept 20 clean sheets in a league in a single season. That's 30%. And then you hear a lot about a lot of people saying, I can't keep a clean sheet. The game has become easier. I mean, from where I'm sitting, the game has become easier. The challenge for SI moving forward is to make, um, not to go out there and um, make it even more easier by revealing everything, but actually just keeping things simple. Like, okay, all right, for example, if you go to the data hub today, two people are going to come to me on the stream asking me what PPDA is. Have a glossary. Please explain PPDA. I don't want to go and explain it to people. I want to play the game, man. Here, I'm entertaining people. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, PPDA. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to lose you too much, but this is where some of my frustration, I know you've seen some of my frustration, but this is where a little bit comes from as well, because like you, as content creators, I don't know, you might get asked questions, but like I get the, the DMs, honestly, it's just, rid- I've got like some PTSD like with DMs, like I've spoken to Tony about this, like I got to a point now, I'm kind of scared to open my DMs, I could wake up in the morning and it's easy, like six um, DMs, but the hidden ones, but it's all tactic questions. And this no wonder and, you and, didn't respond to my DM and ask me, like, you're well, literally, it's, it's literally littered, <laughs> it's literally littered, and there's some things that is like, but the game should be helping these players. So, like, I don't feel there's certain things in the game that I feel it should be easy for a player to grab, and they shouldn't have to go to Correct. a content creator or go out looking for it, sort of thing. Certain things, not everything, but it's just certain. One of those things is that the old, the the, P, the PPDA thing is just like people don't actually know how it's calculated, how it's measured. So then they start asking questions, or they just come up with their own theory, like I did when I'm started talking about how we're the greatest high pressing team. When I realized it's not really the case, <laughs> exactly. but I've said that about four or five times only because I, that was my interpretation of it. That's what, how I knew of the data, of the stat. So I, that's how I went by. But I was wrong only because there was no glossary to tell me that I was wrong. I mean, I'm hoping that moving forward into FM25, SI does a few things. One, the data up, make it a bit more consistent. Like, I, I wish mm-hmm. that... It, okay, for me, going into the game the first time, I see all these numbers. <laughs> all these numbers. Lots of numbers. And I love okay. it. <laughs> yeah, except... Okay, I, 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 the game when you open the game up there's a spreadsheet staring in front of you okay then yeah. you got a data hub with lots of numbers okay and then after you turn the data and then the best data is actually not in the data hub it's actually in the scouting filters because I yes. use the scouting <laughs> filters instead of the data hub yes so and then when you look at the data the data doesn't go into the coaching reports because then the coaching reports you gotta open the coaching report okay okay what how does this player play okay now I gotta go back to the data hub Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then after that, how does he compare to other players? Okay, now let me jump into the scouting report, and draw something yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then, because you can't really compare them, you have to create a tool like what I did. I mean, Stack did it the first. Stack was the first guy to do it, right? He, yeah, he yeah. was the, I took inspiration from Stack, created my own tool as well. And the thing here is this then you got to compare them to other players. Not my point is that maybe with FM25, the UI is a lot more modular. Okay, make it modular so I can take chunks of the data out and go, maybe I want my scouting report to look like this. Or maybe I want my UI first page to be looking like this. It's crazy because I said, this was like two years ago Mm -hmm. where I was like, I was trying to get my point across. People like a notepad where I was like, I wish there was some sort of notepad in Football Manager. But it was like, then I tried to explain it and then people kind of go like, oh, from the Google spreadsheet of that, I was showing them like, how would I would... When I want to do my recruitment, how I, I want a scout report to look like sort of thing. And mm. personally, I can personalize the sort of data, whatever. And that that would obviously be pretty cool. I don't know how it would be implemented in the game. Obviously, hopefully with the new UI, which is going to hope these things can be implemented. It's time to say hello to the newest sponsor of the FM show. Everybody say hello 
to full-time prints. Full-time prints offer a variety of prints to give football fans the chance to remember their favourite football moments forever. They currently offer a range of goals, team sheets, commentary and league tables. Prints are available in A4 through to A1 and can be bought with or without a frame. It makes the perfect gift for occasions such as Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just because presents. Like, seriously, this is the perfect gift for every football fan. You want to go on the website, browse what they've got. They've got so many things to choose from, whether it's teams, European teams, international teams, moments that happen. And if you can't find something you like, you can even do a custom request. You can create anything you've seen yourself. Maybe you've seen a goal you want to relive. You can have that. Maybe you want to relive the first match you ever attended. Or maybe if you're a football manager fan, you might want to do a custom one just designed for football manager that immortalizes your save forever. You can have a print done that has all your trophies, the entirety of the save, the key moments. Maybe you want to relive the Champions League final and have your team sheet and everything on there. You can do that with full-time prints. I'm thinking I'll get myself one and I'm going to put it right behind my head in my office just behind here. And as a little sweetener for you, we've got a little bit of discount to help you out here. So use the code THEFMSHOW. We'll get you 10% off your entire order. Go to fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code THEFMSHOW. That's 10% off your entire order. And there's free shipping on orders over 50 quid. So go get yourself a full-time print. Immortalize that football manager save. Let us know what you've got. Visit fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code the FM Show. Get yourself 10% off. And remember, free shipping on orders over 50 quid. Sometimes it can be a bit of a headache, especially like if you want to get some old season data as well. A lot of us will save the game, the new save as, and then it gets to a point now where we're actually loading up an old save again to pull some old data because you can't do historic data in FM and then uh, loading up another. And there's just so much back and forth. Obviously, that's a different problem. But even with, with, within the game, when you're doing certain things, I feel at the moment, there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth that you have to do because you're trying to grab information from one place, then from another place. But all it could be about the same player. <laughs> I think that's that's an issue, isn't it? Like, And I'm I'm fairly new to like to data and recruiting via data. And I'm yeah. trying to do little bits of it and like on the stream and stuff and talking to to my chat and that going, oh, look, you know, let's try and like, you know, I don't particularly want to just have to use the attribute search. I try and not do that. I'm, I'm an attribute masker, um, you know, so I don't really do that. So I'm like, oh, look, let's look at, you know, what these guys have, uh, how many goals they've scored, like, you know, in yeah, high intensity yeah. sprints, you know, those sorts of things, like cross attempted. I'm trying all to do all that sort of stuff, but you're right. There's no historic data to compare that to. So I'm trying to sort of say to the, to, to my community going, look, Yes, this guy might have 25 goals in 30 games. We'll use that as a nice, easy stat. But we kind of go and like, we can't prove that that's an outlying season for that player. Yeah, we have yeah. to just take it as that's what he's done. Like, we yeah, can't yeah, yeah. go with last season, right? Well, last season he scored 17, but he actually had a lot less to work with last season. Yeah. This season he's getting better opportunities. He's he's improving. Whereas, like, <laughs> you, you don't have that info to hand. And I mean, God bless everyone, all these these skinners. Like we've got a Patreon episode with Musterman yeah. uh coming up shortly where he's going in that sort of like that style of of sort of like recruitment and and at stat focus, which again is gonna be quite helpful to me to sort of go, this is where you need me to look at Tony. And as you say, a stag there with that module, which is this is what a good player looked like, this is what an average player looks like, this is what an elite player looks like. Like all that data's there, but as you say, Dalgit. In what context? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I'll Where give you it? one. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a very simple example. All the data in the game, most, I mean, not all, most of the data in the game is averages. Now, mm. if anybody with half a brain will know averages are useless. Okay? Yeah. Moving averages are really good. But averages on their own don't tell you the whole story. For example, if I were to change a tactic, and I'm using a different tactic for the last eight, three months, Averages aren't helpful, but if there were moving averages in the game for the last three months, then I can isolate those three months and go look at it. Now, that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Secondly, if you wanted to go into the game and look at XG, um, um, looking at a player that created lots of goal-scoring chances for his teammates, how would you identify somebody who contributes a lot to goals in the game? You can't. 
you can't do that effectively in the game because you only have XG and the immediate assist generator. These are the only two players that get reflected in the game in terms of data, okay? What the game has to have is XG buildup, meaning I want to know which of these guys in my team plays a part in scoring goals. I had to do that live on a stream by myself. So, you know, <laughs> we were going through a run and everybody was looking at me and they're going, I want to show you a neat little trick. But I have to exit the game first, which is a normal thing that we do. Okay, so I do all <laughs> the ex So I went through the last 10 games, or last five games, and I isolated uh, all the players involved in creating the goal. You know how long that took me? Don't worry. This is a very entertaining show. Don't worry. I will show you how it is done. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I wish this wasn't, this wasn't a game. Then I had to have an Excel spreadsheet and I broke it down. And we identified that the guy who was contributing the most to my goals had an XG buildup, which was quite high. In, in fact, what this means is that in a, pa in a move that had five passes before it went to goal, he was involved in two of them. And this was for four or five of our best chances. So that player ended up being the best player in my team. And I realized I have to keep him in my tactic because he's good. I was about to transfer list him because I have a rule in my team. All short players have to leave. He was short. <laughs> he was 1.7 meters tall. So we, we did so well. If I had gone through this whole, let's sign the meta player. You would have been out. <laughs> Mm. See, you know what's funny? I, I have similar, so I also do like a fun Benfica save. And I have this thing of like, if you're the main striker, you've got to be able to move. You can't have like acceleration 11 in that league anyway in Portugal. <laughs> so I was avoiding any cost to play this Arthur, Arthur Cabral, Cabral, I believe his name Cabral, is, sort of a target yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At any cost, just do not play him. It's always Marcos Leonardo. Obviously, he's not scoring goals. You bring on Cabral, bang, goal. And it's just like, it just kept happening. So then, then you play the cup games. You let Arta Cabral play, goal, goal, goal. But it wasn't just goals. You just feel there's a general performance uplift. And it's just like, mm -hmm. what's going on? And it's just like, because I only looked at the acceleration and stuff, I'm like, this is not going to work for me. But I didn't actually look at the off the ball, the teamwork, the vision that he has and all of this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's because he didn't seem like my style, my taste of player, I was ready to, to transfer this and sort of thing. But he's actually very, very important. And now you say, you, I can't imagine the team without him. But that's it's that's crazy. really easy though. Like, like you, you say that, particularly as well, like the way that we play the game, on stream with people yeah. watching you do it. I guess it's different if you're playing it on your laptop on your own or you're yeah, sat, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. playing a computer and you've got a little bit more time to sort of be a bit more deliberate <laughs> yeah, about stuff. Yeah, but yeah. because we're trying to, to be entertaining, trying to put on a show, we're maybe going like, oh yeah, like quick eyeball test this guy. Okay, yeah, he kind of looks like, <laughs> as you say, a my kind of player and he does his work and you know, your, your chat's going, oh, sign this other guy, sign this wonder kid. And I'm like, no. I believe in this 36 year old clogger. <laughs> He's going to be the guy, right? We're going to get him on. And you do get a little bit dazzled by certain things. Like, yeah. there's always got to be something. Like, for me, like, a centre back has to have jump and reach. <laughs> got to have jump and reach, right? <laughs> but then I also had an Indonesian centre back who was five foot six, and I was like, "Well, he's got to be there." So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> certain stuff you just there's just certain non-negotiables, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're supposed to be. <laughs> they're supposed to be you know, until that player surprises you. Oh, for me, my non-negotiable is very simple. You, What's that? I don't. Yeah, he's got to have a cool name. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one, actually. A cool name. <laughs> a oh, cool name, that's a... I've got a player that I bring off the bench. I used to have this player. Uh, whenever I was a goal down, I bring him off the bench because he'll re he'll he will you know get a rise out of my team. His name, Viagra. <laughs> 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 you know, see, I'm not I, <laughs> I'm not that big with names, but I just remember there's a time like I was looking for a DM. And I've already got the shortlist, but then I just saw Tim Handworker. And it was like, I'm not even looking at your attributes. I do not care. You come up with the data anyway. <laughs> I just signed him only because his name was Handworker. And I was like, yeah, this, I just quite, I cannot miss that one. <laughs> we've got, uh, I think we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, we've got Nando Toggenberger <laughs> yeah. as well. Plays, he's a Swiss player, apparently. Madness. He's actually quite good. <laughs> so we gave him the number five, Nando number five. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago, I was in a title hunt. My scouts came to me with the name of a player that was, they were recommended five stars. I should sign him. I refused to because his name was Beyond Loser. 
Oh, <laughs> oh that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> And, and the oh, thing about man. me is this I I don't know if anyone's familiar with my Gloucester City safe This was a classic I had a player called Bone And another called Hardy <laughs> So they had to play together in midfield Because it sounded like the perfect <laughs> oh. oh my god It's I, like I FM girl I can't remember the player that she had in her team man. It was just like it was one of those ones that it was her one of her best players as well. And it was that like her chat was just getting like just jokes. And it got to a point where she's like, you know what, people just 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 I don't know, stop being childish now, stop being childish. But it was like, it's quite literally impossible. <laughs> like the name was so bad. It's quite literally impossible. You just cannot miss it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I usually miss those. I don't really find those like funny names in my I think I'm just too focused. I need to win my next game. So I don't oh. think I I don't think I ever even notice these things. You need to take a step back, Aaron. Yeah, it's much more yeah. it's, it's great on the entertaining not, bench I need to loosen here. up. I need to loosen <laughs> hey, up in FM my stream, my stream has adopted a player they've He's, because the moment the scouts came in, they saw his name. Nickname was Nobber. <laughs> they signed him straight in. A whole stream and we have to sign his player. He's Nobber. So I mean, they have adopted him. Because if you look at my stream, it's all about entertaining people. You know what I mean? We play mm -hmm. with... Uh, my stream gets to spin the attributes of all these players so they can mm -hmm. max them out and I have to play against them with normal players. So they got Nobber and they spin his attributes so he's, he's very strong. Mm. He's very, very strong. <laughs> Direct. Direct. <laughs> I think that's why I've had a I had a little pause on streaming because I ah oh man, I just, it's difficult for me, man. The the suggestions and stuff. Like I do like to entertain, but I feel like my entertaining is just through music and dancing and being like just being silly. My FM saves are that's just too personal and too serious for me. Like, the, like it literally winds me up when people do this and do that and sign this and sign that. I'm like, man, that I really have to hold back on that. It's one of the reasons why I take a break because like, as much as I like to entertain people, mm. I realise that my I'm a bit too, I need to loosen up with my football manager saves. I'm not, but I'm I not that open and yeah. I tried yeah. to do one of those saves. I have tried one of those like spin the wheel things. And it's like, it's like after the second, after the second day, I was like, I've had enough, man. I need to go back to my <laughs> typical, my typical saves and start moaning again when I'm losing. I need to, I need that. So we did the, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, me and the woodwork. Oh, man. <laughs> we did the, um, so we did like a, like a sort of anniversary Twitch uh, save like a few a few weeks ago. Like we did like a twelve hour thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, last year, last year I did like a one off. So it was with like the Mad Scientist database. So it was just like a one off save. It wasn't part of my long term save. So we could just do some silly things. We could do like sort of you spin the wheel sort of things, like you know, like <laughs> donate so many subs. You can be in charge of the team. You can pick the team. You can pick the tactic. This year we did it with my actual save, and I was sitting there oh, going, no. "All you can do is pick songs. Like you are not touching <laughs> this." <laughs> yeah, if, I'm too... if it's not working, I'm making it not work. You're yeah, not I'm breaking the same, it man. for me. I'm oh. the same, man. Even when someone comes with like a tactical idea, they're like, "I think you should change this, Ron." I'm like, "No, I know what I'm doing." And it's like when I'm playing the game, though, I'm like. He's actually, he's got a point. Oh, I've, I've done, he's got a I've point. This, he's right. This. I should change this role. So what, what, I'm just not what, allowing anyone to tell me that. <laughs> what I do, I give it a couple of a couple of games and I try yeah, to like, change it during the match. <laughs> and you hope he didn't know. You just hope you should do it quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to try him actually on this. I wonder if he, I wonder if he's yeah. working this sort of role. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should bring on the sub in it, but actually, yeah, just try him on this role and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I've done it yeah I've been there I'm about I've to been joke there okay, excuse oh, yeah. me <clears throat> <laughs> it's all for the show it's all for the show <laughs> oh man I've been yeah I've been there a couple of times man it's just so bad because my name's like RDF Tactics. And so the idea of someone coming in and having a tactic idea that you that now I need to take from them, it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. But, but it's but it's shared knowledge though. It's shared. That knowledge is it. Is it? Is it? Is it? You know what I mean? Like like you know. There, there is obviously I've, some. Sorry, there is some suggestions that are just way out there. Like no, come on, man, just think, think before you type. And there's some other ones like he's right, but I'm just not going to let him know he's right. <laughs> No, I had I had one guy come in and say all all your tactics, um, you, you should play on just one mentality. This is a winning mentality. You win all 
you win all your games playing <laughs> on attacking mentality. And I went like, right, okay, all right, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. For the whole of next season, we'll play on cautious mentality and a low block because people say it cannot be done. Mm-hmm, mm. Come to my stream, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> so, so sometimes for me, it's more of a challenge. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. people come in and go like, uh, you can't do this. And I'm like, yeah, my ego has yeah, yeah, right you, to man, yeah. my body was... That, yeah. that's, that's me in the forum. Yeah, you can't play lot. Like, okay. <laughs> you can't play. I can play. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you can do it doesn't yeah. mean everybody can do it. <laughs> With that sort of thing though, yeah. so I think, I think that's patience. I think that's people's mm-hmm. patience and not really understanding <laughs> if you're trying to do a reactive system, you've got to react to certain things that are happening yeah. on the pitch. He's, a low block is not going to be like, I'm just going to set this and just play 38 games and go. The whole point in a low block is that you're trying to minimize the attack in front of the opposition. So they're going to, other teams are going to attack in different ways, which means in some games you're going to have to defend in different ways. But people don't really have that patience. And it's going down to back to that plug and play feel where they think that one thing just is just fix everything. This is what people, some people might not understand about streaming as well, because they go into a stream. Like, okay, I had people come onto my stream and get bored because it's 2 0, 1 0, 2 0, 1 0, 2 0, 1 0. And they, they see me scoring, winning, and then after that, oh shit, Dalje is going back into his low block again. Dalje, can you not go into a low block? <laughs> Please not play the low block again. I have a guy on my stream who says he says that I've got this button called Control Shift Set Piece, Control Shift Penalty, <laughs> because it always happens when I go into my low blocks. So the, mm-hmm. for the next game, we had a cup game against Bayern Munich. So I decided, okay, it's time to entertain everybody. So I stuck to one tactic, four two three one, which had two attacking fullbacks, two inside forwards. But I knew what was going to happen with this tactic. I knew there would be yeah, a lot of yeah. goals with this tactic. At halftime, it was 3-2. Mm-hmm. At full yeah, time, it was 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> it went to penalties. <laughs> it went to penalties. And I'm like, so I thought, hey, this is going to be cool. I'm going to entertain them. Let the players decide who want to take the penalties. Oh my so I, I'm days. not getting involved, right? I'm not getting yeah. involved at this point. And then as the players are coming out, I wanted to tell them, you know what's the best things about Football Manager? is the animations now. Even when they go up to take the penalties, if you look really carefully, you will know that a player is confident or not yeah. confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. so cool. Are you not entertained? <laughs> 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 That's how we ended the stream. <laughs> and, and, this, and this is what it's about. Like, and, and I think what we are now, we're at a sort of like a crossroads. And it's it's happened a lot with with when we do like the PvP, like player versus player for like draft tournaments and stuff. Like I noticed a shift in playing football manager as a video game or playing football manager as a representation of football. And mm-hmm. yeah. I think they're two very different things. They can very live different. together. And they can inter- interlink, but Not in my I house. think you have a sort of pool of players ah. who look for meta, meta, pla- meta players, meta tactics. They'll look to go back to the phrase used before, Dalja, break the game and just play it <laughs> as a video game. But then there's people like myself who are sitting over here going, hey, you know what? This makes sense. If this was real football, that player would do X, Y, and Z over here. And I'm not looking for the the five nils three nils four nils whatever i'm looking for hey you know what if we can grind out a three two win on a tuesday i'll be over the moon with that like that's, yeah. that's how i play it yeah but the thing is this right this is where it comes boils down to i mean if you're playing against the ai chances are you'll be playing the game of comprehensive highlights or standard or extended you can change yeah. the highlights mode which means that you have time to adapt time to change time to look time to enjoy ai is doing this i will do that so you that is the way the game plays out and this is the direction as I wanted to head in so make it more gives you a chance to be more reactive but when you're playing a network game if I were to play a network game with somebody you think I'm gonna allow you to play it on comprehensive hell man it's on key highlights or commentary mode yeah, exactly. get on with the game don't take too long to get the you have to make one change that's the time so when people yeah. get all upset about network mode it's because two things are gonna happen first you gotta play fast secondly mm-hmm. You got to be good at choosing yeah. your roles and duties and having a right tactic. It's not a question about whether it's a meta tactic or not. I've, I'm on a network save myself. So 
I push my players. Some matches I play low blocks, are five two to one, and I win matches that I don't concede goals. Other matches I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm attacking <laughs> my boy. <laughs> You're gonna die. Today. <laughs> and the thing is this as well. People say all these near post corners are op. No one has anyone ever seen me play a near post corner routine. I play all my corner routines short, and people swear I've got mm. control shift set piece goal on. See, but I see, I've done. Yeah. I've started doing this. So now, I, I'm I, admittedly I am an airpost lover. But there are certain teams. It, it's no point using it. So Sporting, Liverpool, mm-hmm. the, that you've got Van Dijk, you've got Sebastian Quartes. They're literally going to score you thirty goals this season. Yeah, right. If you're going to say for me, that's not really. It. So that's when I start playing about with other things, and that's when I found out short actually is I also like, another little. But what I like, I like about short, short sometimes as well is that okay, it doesn't necessarily take away from a set piece into a positional attack. But I still like the fact that I can have a certain movement mm. that you can sort of, that you can sort of create rather than obviously just lobbing the ball to the box and then bang, header. At least this way, playing short, I can still gain control and have control, maintain control and try and open up the opponent that way. That's something that I've come to, because there is some, obviously some teams, if you're using near pulse, it's going to work better than when you're on other teams. Of course, Trent and Van Dyke is going to be sort of a, cheap combination yeah. for that sort of thing but it's also one of those things why people complain about something that you don't have to use that is what winds me up like oh net post near post this near post that don't use near post <laughs> that's, that's a good point that's a good point people, people, people saying that all oh, the game's too easy or certain formations certain tactics certain game playing styles <laughs> are, are, are overpowered don't use them then it's not even just don't use them, it's don't use them in that way you know is going to yeah. get results. Like, yeah. We're not saying don't use Gegenpress, but don't use Gegenpress in a 4 3 one with two DMs on support, with two fullbacks on it. And because you know these things are what can trigger those certain results or whatever makes the game too easy or double advance forward. Like you realistically, there's not going to be many systems that you're trying to realistically create that's going to come with a double <laughs> double advanced system a double advanced forward system but if you're doing that clearly you know that the advanced forward can get goals if you're using two of them you might be even doubling your chances whatever it is but you won't then fiddle with a a complete forward or in support or whatever because now you're moving into unknown territory not quite know what you're going to get sort of thing but then you're going to complain that double advanced forward is just too easy and my strikers are scoring this amount of goals or you're going to come back tomorrow and say your strikers are not scoring at all. But, and then it's the game's you, you, could, you could tweak. Like, so say, for example, right, we all know right, that you could plug 4 2 3 1, Geg and Press, Liverpool, you'll have a pretty good chance of winning the league without yeah. adjusting yeah. any, well, buying players or even any roles, right? But you could make that. You could take Geg and Press off. You could go for a wing play style of football. You could play very similar to Geg and Press. You could have high press, you could have high tempo, you could have, you know, the different styles of passing could be almost Geg and Press-ish, but it plays a different way and it might not necessarily be as potent. It might even be more potent. We don't know. Like, there's ways of taking what's there and playing it in an ever so slightly different way. Do you know what I mean? Or like Arsenal, just play through the middle rather than, than you know, yeah, yeah. Than, than going and stretching the play. You can take what is there and play it just tweak it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, but thing I is, wanna know. But thing is I just wanna know what the line was with uh sorry, the line of OP. What's that? Where's the where's the line drawn? Because oh, I, I get this uh, thing where I mm. think like some like someone might pick Luton, use a mid block or a low block, and get 17th or 16th to stay in the league and think that tactic has failed them. Yeah. But that is a good result. <laughs> that is a good result. But because they haven't got into Europe with the first season, it's now that tactic is not as good. But you uh, actually just got the results that you needed to overachieve at Luton. Staying in the Premier League with Luton is an overachievement. So if you can do that in a mid block or low block, then you cannot come to me and tell me that a mid block or low block isn't working just because you didn't finish seventh or eighth with Luton. I, I think, think that's another thing. Yeah. I think people's. Uh, expectations of success. This is something that you've got to be realistic about expectations. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, if I were to play against the AI, I probably can. Uh, it's probably super easy because it's the AI. It's not. It's not going to be as unpredictable human, as yeah, the yeah. human. Then the other thing is this. I mean, like, when people talk about meta and meta, if you go into an 
I think a lot of people are complaining because I think not a lot of people. I think a small proportion of people yeah, are making a lot, lot of noise. Noise. And, those, <laughs> yeah. and these are probably network players. You know why? Because if you go into a network game, chances are there is going to be one of you in that network game who's going to be thinking about, I'm going to win everything and I'm not going to bother. I want a really easy way to play this game. I'm just going to yeah. sign the best players for my tactic and I'm playing on key highlights. I'm just going to win. I'm going to get a really tall joker and everything near post. Okay, I'm going to get fast players that can last 90 minutes and I'm going to go down the flank. <laughs> I'm going, I know that my players can, I got players that can arrive late, good off the ball. I'm going to go everything in low crosses because I can flood the area. The thing is, most people don't understand why these instructions are good because these instructions can be good if you can find the right kind of players. That's the skill level of maybe 5% of the data player base in the world who can identify the players for a tactical system and then go on autopilot. And then you have another group of players who might want to, I want to play the game a bit differently. Even in a network mode, they might want to go, I want to play like, no, my definition of football, realistic. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. I will play a low block because not many teams, the, the, uh, Birmingham doesn't play a high pressing system, right? Luton cannot play high pressing, so I'm not going to do it. So expectations are really important here. You know, I mean, this is how I see it. I think if people re recognize that in a network game, there's not going to be a lot of time for you to make changes and react and adapt and, you know, maybe show your entire yeah. skill set. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at it. I think, I think as well, when you're saying as well, like, like looking at expectations, like if you look at these these tactics, they're often used in initial testing with Liverpool, Man City. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're designed to get as much out of a game as you possibly can. But, I mean... Show me a tactic where Haaland doesn't get fifty goals. Like you know, I mean, that's, that's not OP. Like that's like also as well comparing this to real life. Man City and Liverpool for the last few years have only lost two, three, four games max a season. Like that's not. Yeah, yeah. So in a sense, is that the representation of real football? You know, no. is it that like those two teams are overpowered because <laughs> they are overpowered in like. In a <laughs> Yeah, I think people have to manage their expectations as well. I mean, like, I think if you play the game the first time, you probably hear stories about how people can get um, some busboy team from yeah, the lower yeah. tiers and bring them to the top. And you go like, I want that kind of an experience. I think at the end of the day, the game firstly is, okay, I keep saying the word the uh, game. Actually, it's a simulation. It's a simulation, as I make it into a simulation of results, like how, how the game will simulate football results. And then, they put a game on top of it, no? the visualization, to give, make you think that it's a game. Actually, all you're doing is you're paying X amount of dollars for a spreadsheet. <laughs> that, that you can't control. That you can't control. <laughs> <laughs> you think that because you're watching animation engine, you're controlling? No. The animation engine <laughs> is playing with your spreadsheet. Spreadsheet manager. Yeah, <laughs> you, but isn't it? Spreadsheet manager. So first you get the reality right, okay? Don't look at the animation and go, why is my player not facing goal? It's a spreadsheet. His attention is only, his anticipation is only 12. Or his mm -hmm. 8 for reaction. So if people can, exp can understand that, maybe, you know, maybe uh, different expectations. Mm. Yeah. And again, I suppose if you put on 2D highlights, you can't see which way they're facing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> which is the best representation. My mouth was to send it to his grave, the 2D representation. <laughs> I do I do realise if there's certain people that are trying to, um, that they are used to that sort of, that quick result thing. So now mm. trying to go backwards, so to speak, is a bit difficult for them. Mm. So... They know that before, previously, oh, I could just pick Fulham and win the league by the second season or whatever it is. And now <laughs> it's like, okay, I pick Fulham, but I'm just hitting Europe and Europe and Europe, which is actually good, but they're not seeing that as good because they know years ago they were getting Premier League titles with Fulham or whatever it is. Maybe that also plays a part with some people as well. But yeah, like, like you say, it's, yeah. it is like a small group making a lot of noise so, about certain things. The, the other thing is... You all, not all clubs and not all managers are going to be the same. Some clubs mm -hmm. might not hire the best coaches, so the players won't develop as well as you. See, you could get players to develop. So their expectations are different. Right? If you go into a game and you go like, I'm going to hire the best coaches, the best this, the best that, I'm using the best tactics, I'm going to bring in the best players. How many teams in real life actually do that? 
I mean, well, that, that's the thing as well, isn't it? Like, you know, like, oh, buy this Wonder Kid, buy this Wonder Kid. As if you can just do that. Like, yeah. and he's going to just slot in and he's going to be the perfect fit. And you're not going to have a bedding in period. You're not going to have like him, him, like, not quite getting up to speed straight away or the failed Wonder Kid. Like, yeah, just because he's been dubbed the next God knows what, it doesn't mean that he's going to be the perfect player for your tactic. Sometimes you've got to buy the 28, 29 year old who's been around the block a little bit, knows his stuff isn't quite as good maybe doesn't have as good potential but hey gets the job done on a saturday right here right now <laughs> but that's not as glamorous is it yeah <laughs> exactly so so at the end of the day you know if if you're looking at the game from a really simple uh, take a really simple point of view enjoy the game have fun do i can't man there's just something i just can't man i've see i'll I'm a bit like obviously I treat football manager as of like a like it's real football football, but I I go I take it maybe about five steps a bit too far. Whereas where that's where my expectation sometimes is a bit different as well. Where I can like all of the spreadsheet stuff as much I can go into open football manager knowing this sort of stuff. The moment I'm in a football game though, the game has gripped me that much. I'm on the sideline and I'm expecting some mental things. So I think obviously I get some unrealistic unrealistic expectations, but then after a while, I do tone it down. There is another thing though, please people. And I'm obviously this goes for myself as well, because I am one of those people trusting content creators or these tactic results. I nah. wouldn't necessarily trust all these. And this got like, I, I, I fully know that I do put out tactics myself, but just do not only take in the information. If there's a tactic that might look good to you, have a look at it. If it looks good, play about with it. And then you can see why the tactic is so good. And it goes back to the point of why Dow does his content and why I've shaped my content differently over the last couple of years as well. It's all about helping getting other people yeah. to understand mm -hmm. what certain things are. Okay, you can download the tactic if you want. So I've got Arteta tactic. Yeah, you can download that. Even in, Even doing that, I always tell people though, you may have to make tweaks depending on what your team is. My, I ha there's a tactic where I had to use the low defense line because I picked two teams to test it with, and both centre backs, the agility is like seven and eight, so I had to naturally defend deeper. In your tactic, that actually might cost you, mm. so you might have to push that up. But it's mm. all about you understanding that in your team. Exactly. And, and then as you, as the tactic develops, like you know, you then get exactly, to go back yeah. to the point before about you get to. Yeah. To the transfer window, so you bring I might put, player in. I might put yeah. yes, the amazing perfect four three three. That is obviously YouTube be trying to gain your attention, but there mm. is a reason why the videos are almost forty minutes long because I'm trying to give you so much information rather than, and it's not even to shoot down other content creators, but it is pretty difficult. <laughs> it is pretty difficult for people to really understand what they're doing if we're not giving them that information. So I do feel as well as Maybe I'm going, again, going a bit OTT and a bit serious about this, but as content creators, I do feel sometimes we know that we've got a few thousand uh, people watching us. I feel we've got that responsibility of making sure we are giving out good and right information to people, especially for those that are coming for that help as well. Us giving them maybe fake results, whatever, it's just, it's just not helpful at all. I'm not saying that people are doing that, but you know, me just giving you a tactic and saying these are the results is not really helpful if then they are struggling with that yeah. exact same tactic. Because now think, they don't understand why it's going wrong. Uh, for me, like, okay, over the years, right? I mean, when I first started out doing these kind of tactic videos, I was doing a lot of them back in 2016. Yeah. Here's a tactic. Here's liquid. Go win. I like, drop a <laughs> day. Nah, brilliant. <laughs> like, you know, drop this back. Like, Hail Mary. Go win. Used to be like that. I mean, I mean, like, for me, for me, then I realized one thing. I mean, I, I started this community and I was, my goals for the community were really simple. I want to help you fish. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. stop, shift away from go take this tactic to more like, this is the logic behind creating this tactic. These are the yeah. moves you see. This is why, like, for example, the low block. I started doing a lot of low blocks recently because I wanted to explain to people. You know, you want to do a low block successfully, they are two, you know, so I, I kind of like explain how things work, like, um, and then change things in the game. Like, why am I changing? Uh, why have I gone with wingers as opposed to inside force? And I go like, there's a really simple reason, guys. You look 
this is what's happening and this is why we do it. And what I've noticed in the last few years is that in 2016, when people used to bring their tactics to me for bringing your tactics, the tactics were not very good, right? So mm. I would have a lot of work to do and I couldn't do well. I get fired. Today, 2023, <laughs> four, three, four people are bringing tactics. I'm going like, dude, your tactic is good. I want a yeah. copy. <laughs> we, we, we had that as well because we, we've got the tactics garage, yeah. right? Okay. We've got the tactics garage that we do on, on, on the show or like on Patreon. And they're coming in and me and Aaron are sitting there going, oh, I don't really know why this isn't working. Like, what tactic is it? It was like, mate, I'm going to force myself to change a role. Here. I'm going to force myself. That looks good to us. Yeah, it's, especially when they send in their team and it's like, mate, you've got it perfectly set up. <laughs> People are getting better at the game. I mean, oh, the 100%. numbers. 100%. Yeah. yeah. The 100%. numbers are showing it, you know, like if you go to the Steam Achievements page, you see a lot of achievements that have got 30%. I mean, the fact is, it's mind-boggling to me that 17% of the database, the players have got the Invincible Achievement. I thought it was really hard to get that. Man, I was, there's like one, almost one out of four for that. Nah, it's hard it. for me. It's hard for me. It's yeah. hard for me. I always get to that point where you've either wrapped up the title and then your team starts dropping performance or... I would loot or I would beat Man City and Liverpool away and then like straight up I'm like, oh, we can do it. And then you go to Fulham. <laughs> and maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. It's, it's, it's the rotation with the rotation with yeah, when you've the got killer, like European the games yeah, on there going, yeah, yeah. And you rotate the side and then like but all then these guys. See that, but that's the thing. Like that's when I go go back to the tactic testing. We don't know people's testing. This is what I mean about trusting people we don't know their testing conditions we don't know mm. if they're quite literally just vanilla they've opened up the game or mm. they've got some sort of thing where it's taking away the injuries and and stuff like that so for me i don't do any of that but i would openly and tell you that whenever i play a game i select every single player rest them until the next game and then just keep doing that so it's likely that my players are just fit for every game in a normal save will i do that will you do that definitely definitely not but it's one of those things. It's like it's a bit gamey, obviously. But for me, it's a testing con that testing conditions, and I always tell people that that is what I'm doing. It's not helpful. My players aren't going to develop as quickly as your players will. But it just means that my players are fit for this tactic test. And I'm open. I openly tell people that. But like, this is what I mean about people's testing conditions because we don't know Maybe how they're testing their yeah, tactic. Exactly. Did they simulate it over a season? Did they play it? Did they simulate use it, it as well? Commentary? Like even playing, even yeah. playing the games is a new thing for me. So I, yeah. like previously, I didn't understand the difference between instant resulting or going on holiday and playing the game. Okay. And it got to a point where I was like, why is it where I can smash this team on instant result, but when I'm playing it, it's nothing is even happening in the game. Yeah. It's and then that's why I got to a point like in FN20, uh, this one, it was like really important. You, I need to play the games. Yes. And again, I show you the game status. Like some of these test saves, there was one test thing that was, that was annoying me because I couldn't get it right. And it was like, I'm spending 12 hours on just a test thing, just trying to get it right. But it's because I'm playing the games and I'm trying to figure out things as well. I've, like I can just, people can use instant result, but it's not how you're going to play the game. So if I'm giving you a tactic, I'm going to have to try and play the game to the best of my ability to, because I know that you're going to play the game. You're not going to go an instant result a whole season. You're going to try and play the game. Mm. It's, it's not no great telling you I've got a great tiki taka tactic and I haven't actually seen it play. You have a good point because <laughs> we all have different ways of playing the game and I'll give you a very good example. Yeah. How many people follow my substitution strategy? Because I have a unique one. I see, don't that was, see, I was, remember I, subs, remember? Yeah. I think... I am very likely to take off at 8.0 with the 60, at the 60th minute mark. Some people might go, this player, his attributes are really important because I don't have another car walker in the side. I'm, he has to play. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so everybody has a different substitution strategy and many yeah. people might not even take that into consideration when they're testing tactics. Player selection. Yeah, you, you, might bring a, you might bring a player off when he scored a hat trick. Exactly. You know, all right, you know, rest him off. Whereas on a simulation, he scores four. 
because mm-hmm. he's been kept on. He's, he's then a little bit more tired for the next match. Oh. Whereas you go, you've had your hat trick, right? Get get your standard ovation, get yeah. yourself off, get a young lad on to try and get some minutes out there. Away you go. Exactly. I could be playing a safe. I want my striker to score another. I mean, he's very close to 100 goals of the season. And I'm going like, okay, good. Well, he's got to play this. He's got, I'm not rotating him. No way. No way. He's staying. He's got to get his third goal. He's injecting him with cortisone. Just yeah. get out then, there. And then another guy. And he... Uh, Aaron could be testing a tactic going, we're rotating him, we're rotating him, we're rotating yes, him. I'm yes. him. I want my striker yeah. to score 100 yes. bloody goals. Guess, you know, <laughs> it all comes to what do you want out of the tactic at the end of the day? Like, do you, are you looking for the invincible tactic? If you yes. are, good luck searching for it. Like, you'll find it eventually, but... <laughs> there's not the, yeah, there's looking, not the... Yeah, it's going to be A, but there's not get the. you to the next level. Like, are you looking to just upskill and go, right, I've got a team here that's currently 12th. What tactic is going to get me into that European mix? Can I get to sixth? Exactly. That's a different tactic. Or is it a different role? And then do you have to then get another one to break into the, <laughs> the title mix? Well, maybe. Like, or maybe it's just players. Yeah, simple <laughs> things, right? I mean, how do you... The game has not evolved. I mean, like, it's no longer dumb a tactic, go rinse and repeat. Now, you start with a 4 2 three, one. You take an, I love doing this in my streams. I, I start with a 4 2 3 one. I score a goal, one goal, and I go 5 2 one low block for the rest of the game. We are on 20 minutes, and I'm See, gone I'm into scared. a low block. See, so something like that, I'm scared. I, I always wait, because I've got a new tactic, and I've got it in brackets as well. Like So when you download it, I'll give you like four, because obviously different scenarios. So this one in the brackets is like half back after when you're two new up. <laughs> I always, for me, it's only two new. That's when I start doing, okay, lads, come back now. <laughs> well, I, I remember, I remember, you may have said this on, on stream dials, or like remember it was a couple of years ago, like for new people coming into the game, the advice that you gave was right, what are you gonna do, right? Pick the team, pick a team that you know really well, right? Replicate them and then play it, right? Then master your four four two, master your four three three, master your four two three one, then decide how you wanna play it. Like because once you've worked out how the basics work, you yeah. can tweak it and you can get all the yeah. funky goodness happening. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I think I think people should I just agree, yeah. keep it simple. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. don't the first day you come in and then if this is the first time you're playing the game, okay. Frankly speaking, if you're struggling to keep a, if you're struggling to keep a clean sheet, okay, then perhaps what you really need to ask yourself is, do I make the right changes? That's all. And do I know my tactical system? Do I know how to control a game? Do, when I'm attacking, you know, things like uh, understand the tactic. Where are the vulnerable areas when I'm attacking? What do I need to do? So. Don't change tactics if you don't find success. Ask yourself why that tactic you used the first time around struggle. So always start with something and, you know, it's the more the old adage, don't give up. If you give up, you never learn anything from it. (laughs) Aaron's rejecting that advice straight away. (laughs) (laughs) If the talent doesn't work after five games, I start a new (laughs) save. (laughs) (laughs) But But that is important though, it is. But it could, it could be, like, again, we've had these conversations uh, on the show before. You're saying there about are you conceding loads of goals. You might be set up perfectly, but you might have your, like, one, like you might have a ball-playing defender who can't actually play the ball. So yeah. he's giving the ball away, and uh-huh. that's yeah, good, yeah, that, yeah. That's, then that's allowing pressure on you. Just change his role to centre-back, and then all of a sudden, that might stop. Your setup might be perfect. It might just be that one player role or that one player who doesn't quite fit the system. I think it is patience though as well. It is patience. It's a, it's another thing as well. It's like someone will be like, oh, I'm conceding all my goals. So it happened actually in the same video where on Fulham, in the first half, and it's like half time I said it as well and I was going mad. It's like they've had three throw-ins in that left-hand side, but I'm complaining about the set piece rather than what's leading up. Why is why are they breaking down? Yeah. And why is why is there always have something is That's leading like up to it? it. So it's not the set piece itself. Mm-hmm. It's what is leading up to the set piece sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's one of those things is that some people don't just don't have that. I wouldn't even say patience. Is that they just don't even want to look at that sort of stuff. Some it's like they just see something and think that's the direct cause no, rather than what's led up to that. That's brilliant. Because when I'm streaming and I look at field transitions, right? So um, I'll switch over and I'll, I'll help people out and go like, okay, I'm changing to comprehensive extended highlights right now. I just made a change. Okay, um, because I noticed that um, they were attacking me down the left side. Okay, they're attacking me down the left side. I made a change. I'm locked. I'm going to change a role or something. I'll, I'll make a change. And immediately, the highlight changes. And it's now me 
with a throw in on the other side. Okay, for example. <laughs> And then people go like, what's happened? I mean, like, sometimes you have to recognize certain things that happen in your game. Look at the highlight, understand where the ch what change you made, and look at where the next highlight starts from as well. Because mm -hmm. it could be you were being attacked down one flank, you made a change, now suddenly you have a throw-in on the same flank, but now you're in the opposition third. It, if you wanted to take a bit more time, look at small things in the game. I mean, it's a lot to ask, but, you know, I know that not everybody's going to be like this. Not everyone's going to go into the game. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to yeah, make yeah. all these changes. I just want to stick in my tactic and play the game. Why does it have to be so bloody complicated? Now, I'm saying that over time, um, the game is going to change. Right? It's, go it's not going to be super difficult, but simple things you can do. For example, if you play a 4-2-3-1, this is, brings me back to the point you said just now about downloading tactics, right? You know, sometimes you know, make role changes, right? For the sake of you, know, you don't yeah, do it yeah, for the yeah, sake yeah. of it. But I do. Mm. I won't play a ball playing defender like you said. If I've got shite muppets for central defenders, I'll play central yeah, defenders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see a. I see a back three. I'll go from wingers to inside forwards, and then I'll get my fullbacks to go around the wingers so that <laughs> the central defenders <laughs> they're about to meet hell, man. So, <laughs> so. You can make simple changes, but in order for you to understand those simple changes, understand your tactic first. Quick question, just while this episode's on. Have you subscribed to The FM Show, either on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from if you're listening on audio feed? If you haven't, can we ask a little favour? Maybe you might want to consider doing that. You might want to help us out. If you do want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Of course, if you leave a like on the video, if you've enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Obviously, it's the same on audio platforms as well. Little comments, little five-star reviews and that. They really mean a lot to us and it helps boost the show and it means that people are enjoying it and it becomes more visible. Obviously, you can do that via social media as well. You can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, however you want to do that or come and join the Discord. The Discord's a great place to hang out. You meet like-minded individuals from the community. You get direct access to myself, producer Steve, RDF Tactics. What more can you say? I mean, that seems totally fair. It costs nothing, and it really helps the show out. So hopefully, that's the sort of thing you might consider. If you do want to give us a little bit of love, come and support us. Come and subscribe to the show, because you know what? We enjoy it, and we like you. So you know what? Back to the episode. What, what, what I quite like doing... Um, at the minute and again it's something i've been doing with with streaming is like i'm one of these i remember someone in my chat going you play friendlies i'm like yeah of course i do like because <laughs> like for me because for me right like, and again this is part of me so i like explain to my community i know some people don't they just skip through it straight through it, they know what they're doing but when I, what i like to do is if, if i'm trying a new tactic out mm. or i've got new players coming in i like to get the camera right up in the stands so i can see all the pitch oh, see yeah, how yeah. these players fitting in and, and and the tactics working and i can say right i know this isn't going to be perfect the opposition <laughs> we're playing aren't of the level we're going to meet every single week and the players aren't fully tuned into it but i want to see if my thinking makes sense and if i can see the players moving in the way i'm expecting then great and if they're not then hey you know what i've got six games to tweak this before we go into <laughs> league mode um and i can give myself a slightly better chance going into the league where rather than going right I've simulated through all my friendlies, match day one, and it turns out I've lost my first six matches because I've not had that six free <laughs> hits already. Like, you know what I mean? Why would I not give myself that opportunity? Yeah. It is yeah. crazy. It's not, I'm going to keep referring to this video, and I'm not even releasing it because it is a very long video and I need to somehow work out. But it is that thing that I remember because obviously we select Everton midway through a season, so I don't know what's going on. Obviously, they're on poor form. And it was a straight away that is in the. I remember creating a tactic using that halfback and Segundo Volante. I was like, oh, yeah, but if the halfback does drop in and Segundo Volante keeps moving a bit too early, this can then actually create a gap in midfield, in centre midfield, and we've got no one to sort of pass to because then obviously the halfback will be in the back three. Then there'll be a gap in the middle because now the Segundo Volante has gone to attack a midfield. And then it got to in the game where like, we, we sort of saw it, but we scored. But I did, I made an point, important point of like, that though was riskier. Like I'm not sure Luck. how happy, yeah, I'm, how happy you should be that you're scoring a goal like that because I've seen that as built as play was built, it was like a lucky pass, mm. then a little bubble, and then we went on our attack. But if we lost the ball, then that what I pointed out earlier of my second Volante being so it was like okay, if it causes us another if it causes me another problem, or if I see that again, then I'm just gonna drop him on support first to see how that acts, and if it's just the role 
or the player likes to move a bit too forward, then I'm just going to have to tweak the role completely. But it's something that you just have to notice. And some people, again, because if they scored from it, they think it's a good thing. Sometimes you just just keep an eye out on what's going but again, on. But again, like how, like, you know, Man City, I suppose, in real life, potentially some people accuse them of being a little bit sterile. Like it's just, it's, you, they, these are robot players doing robot things. Yeah. I know we're playing a video game. Some people might not like the robot, robot, robot movements. Of like <laughs> this player has to do this, to do this, to do this, to this. There's the goal. Like sometimes those little bobbles, those little deviations, those little moments yeah. of individual brilliance, that's what we live for. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We live for it. I wouldn't rely on it though. That's the. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I, <wouldn't... laughs> uh, I I don't know. I think RDF might remember this when on the forums, right? Remember, I posted a little video about this uh, ball playing defender was dribbling all the way from. The oh back. yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. Didn't we... you do it with Jolin Lescott? I did. Well. The, you, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes. A lot. A lot of defenders. I, I, every, every year is my goal to see a defender. I mean, ever since they broke the Indian carry the ball. Yeah. Mm. So he carried the ball all the way. I mean, I wasn't interested in him carrying the ball. Honestly, I was only interested in that small little animation of his teammate going attack the box, attack the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was so impressed with that small, yeah, one second in animation. I this is. Say, this yeah. is what we're talking about our football manager personalities. Now, I saw that, but I'm seeing it as fo- football, football. And mm. then I'm losing my head like, but I don't understand why the other team's defenders are just moving, blah, 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 blah. But again, I just become so blind to the fact that he's playing a team like four, three, four divisions below him. I don't, <laughs> I don't even notice these things, but that's because I just become, but that's my expectations of it. Obviously in football, it's like, but why is he defender? And obviously attributes to spreadsheet what's causing him yeah. a, set, a defender to turn away or not be engaged. He's going to have low aggression, low bravery sort of thing. Of course, seeing it is going to be different than knowing it. I only saw it. I didn't know it. The moment you know it, it's like, I just fucking feel silly now. And the worst <laughs> thing is on the forum, you can't delete comments. So you can't, you just got to live with it. It's like, so, yeah, I'll take this L. I'll take this L. <laughs> because I wanted to, this, for me, it was like when people openly <laughs> complain about the game, they go like, now I'm not referring to Aaron here. I'm not talking about Aaron because yeah. Aaron, Aaron at least responded. I mean, like, you know, he went like, oh shit, okay, I know, you know, this is, <laughs> this is it's not what he was aiming for. But, <laughs> People might put up a video on in a, on Reddit or somewhere and go like, this is terrible defending. I'm going to myself. There could be a lot of reasons why that is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And for me, the reason why that team defended like that was the collective determination attribute for that back line was 16. Mm-hmm. That's five players. <laughs> Average of four. Four. Mm. And- <laughs> <laughs> they gave up. They were already three goals down at that point or two goals down. They, they just went, okay, we're not playing anymore. I'm giving up. <laughs> and, I'm done. And you've got AIR one of those players allowed, who dreads big matches as well. AIR, like, I was going to say, the AI are allowed to play good football as well. I think this is this, this thing <laughs> like, your your war and your defenders should be allowed to have a bad game. Your, the AI should be able to be able to do some amazing things as well and bamboozle your defenders. And again, it's one of those things that like maybe people just can't take it. Like, no, that's Van Dyke. He shouldn't have blah, 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 blah. I think, I, I, I think the thing is, and this is where I reckon the frustration comes from, is because you can't control it. Yeah. Like if it happens, yeah, on, yeah, if it happens yeah. on FIFA, right? And I hate yeah. to use that, but if it happens on FIFA, you take the L a little bit more because you're like, you know what? Yeah, yeah I made bad. that mistake. Yeah, yeah. I could have stopped it. <laughs> I could see that coming a mile off. It's my own fault. <laughs> Whereas on this game, football manager, you're sat going, I can't believe that those numbers didn't do that thing. Yeah. Like, just... <laughs> yeah, it's just the worst thing is when the AI score a good goal. And it's like, the moment I want to, I want to compare, I'm like, oh, that's a really good goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like how many people out there right now, after the FA Cup uh, match between Manchester United and Liverpool, how many people out there went, Harvey Elliott, that yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. if he was me, I would have passed the ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. 5v2, yeah. he missed the... You know what's funny? Do you remember someone moaned as well? Because there, there was a player that passed it back to his centre-back and someone was like, who in real football would do this? And it was like, that moment where Harvey Elliott, he actually should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> he should have done that. But it is funny. It is funny when people say that sort of thing, like this would never happen in football. It's like, how many football have you actually watched? Because there's... For sure, the, a striker has passed it out of the box and passed it all the way back. Yeah. For sure, that's happened in football. If he needs to do it. And it's funny because it's like, you didn't watch the clip. 
like he's got his back towards goal. The, the defenders on each side of him, the only way that he can pass the ball is by passing it back out. Mm. It's either that or he loses the ball. Would you be happy he loses the ball? He kept the ball for you, but you're still upset. But it's because they didn't really look at the situation. They just saw a striker passing it backwards. Oh my God, I'm going to lose my head. <laughs> and it, yeah, I guess for SI, it is difficult. It is difficult for them though, because obviously they've got to read these things. They can't explain every single thing. But and then some of these complaints are just like, I, yeah, I some of these complaints are like very easily could be replied to, but it's just I like... I suppose you're also, and I, I, I almost feel bad saying this, a lot of the people who are playing the game, like a lot of people who watch football, don't really know that level of detail either. Yeah, so yeah, kind yeah. kind of like having to like... There are people who know football on a surface level. I, I don't claim to be the greatest tactician in the world. <laughs> I know a little bit. I know just about enough to get by, and I'm learning more by having conversations with yourselves. But there are people who don't know these these things. They're not interested in these things. They just want to turn up and say, right, okay, I've got four players in defence. I've got three players in midfield. I've got three players up front. That should probably work. Why is, why is it not working? You know, because it worked in the last game. Yeah. It worked in the game before and the game before. And I've bought all these kids who are 17 for 30 million quid. And or that's how, what's supposed to happen. Or how about I'm taking this tactic out, which was made in, which was played, last played by Arsenal in 1935 or 1945. Yeah. And I'm going to make it work in 2024. Why doesn't it work? <laughs> Hello, excuse me. Yes, that's I a, Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. retro tactics is that, okay, I can give you a retro one, but I'm going to have to make tweets to kind of modernise it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know I mean? but that's not the red. That's not how they used to play. So <laughs> yeah, then you're going to get that. Yeah. Then you get but, that and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> but, as, but as well, the beauty of those retro tactics, because I've thought about this, like I, I had, again, as I say, not much of a tactician myself, but I, I considered looking at things like, you know, like the other thing, inverting the pyramid the book right yeah yeah looking yeah. at that and like taking like the great tactics from back in the day and going would they work in that current football manager sort of like style but then looking going i don't know maybe you take like the dynamo keev like awesome sort of like yeah. team that was the, the, the birth of, of total yeah. football and then going that's great do that but these players would have had like you know zero fitness zero stamina <laughs> like, so it's not gonna, like you'd have to literally go can i get this with like second division non-league footballers yeah. equivalents now going how would it work like you know can you play a proper a proper 1920s halfback no, you yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> or like can you can you play stoke 442 how can you play stoke 442 i mean you're looking at who in the premier league is playing like that nowadays anyone playing like that is gonna sort of just get walked over now everyone yeah. realized that actually holding the ball can be a better form of defense as well mm. but it's just like it's one of those things yeah people just got also maybe because it's a game they think that you could just do it because you can <laughs> you can you can't even play the arsenal invincibles way yeah <laughs> yeah literally yeah. literally literally and yeah, it's but people again back to this expectation things. People just have some, and me myself included as well. By the way, as well, just crazy high expectations, <laughs> crazy high expectations. I just have one expectation: of the game. It just has to <laughs> entertain me. That's all. <laughs> I look. I will just nah. play this game. Have it's a good time. Have the greatest. <laughs> yeah, just have fun. It's gonna have the greatest names. Look, I'm gonna sign Viagra, Bone, <laughs> Hardy. I I got a oh Rivas. Very yeah. nice. I I signed him because his name is Rivas. So whenever I'm playing the game live on stream and he misses an obvious chance, I am sending you down the river with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, on a canoe. <laughs> like, you know, how about me having Carlos Alberto? This is for me fun. Like, you know, he's got Carlos yeah, Alberto. Yeah. He must be good at the game. No, he's not. <laughs> I did that. I signed a Brazilian player called Janinho just because he was. Oh, my <laughs> day. But he wasn't, he wasn't Janinho. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a question of expectations and what we want from the game, right? So yeah. ultimately, it's a simulation that's trying to be a game, okay? And if if you can have fun, I mean, maybe FM25 will be different. Maybe FM25 will be, a, a, a this might look really, really good and might have this modular UI and, you know, have all these improvements and yeah, you never know. I mean, just, I think managing expectations is kind of key here. <laughs> That's my worry though. Is it football <laughs> manager can deliver on that the making it look real stuff? It's just like, uh oh, now my expectations are gonna be 
<laughs> I mean, look, it's not- for me, I don't know. We were all in. I'd rather just 2D. If you just give me 2D, then, I, then you know. But then what's your expectation of 2D compared to See, my that, expectation but, but of 2D? This is the thing, though. Like, maybe because I'm a content creator now, I was never like this before. Like, I would, hey, I never I- had these, like, you need to fix this or this needs to be. Like, I was, that was never a thing before. I just, Champ Man 4 was the most buggiest game yet. I, you should play it. You just like you don't. I don't lose my head over now though. As I, I don't know why, as a content creator now, it's just it is a bit different for me. Now I was like, ah, oh, this is broken. I think, <laughs> I think it, it might actually have to do with SI themselves. I mean, yeah, look, that's what yeah. I was thinking. That's what, but it's because now 3D thing. So it's like now my thoughts yeah. on it is different. It's not only commentary anymore and uh, 2D. It's now like I'm thinking differently now. And now you got positional players like. Oh, you got positional play now. I need to defend perfectly, and all you've got, you've got a thing as well now because we're because we're streaming it or because we're creating content on yeah, it with yeah. videos and stuff. You want it to look right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As well, so you you are now all all of a sudden looking at how it looks. And I used to have yeah, this, yeah, I used yeah. to have this argument with with my with my child at the time, and I, and I eventually worked out that they were right and I was wrong, like because <laughs> yes, I was like saying like like yeah, but, but I'm I'm big enough to accept that. That's cool. Yeah, like you know, I'm not. Like, I was like I was always the thing going. I don't care about the, the graphics, the graphics of the match. Like, I wasn't that bothered, right? The animations. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. look, I don't need it to look like, you know, Grand Theft Auto or whatever, like, mm-hmm. you know, modern warfare. It doesn't have to look that level for me. Like, for me, it just has to look reasonable. As long as I can see the goals, I'm fine with it, right? I'm not bothered about the burger stands and the car parks and the prisons, <laughs> that sort of stuff, right? Let it go. But then, as it keeps improving every year, yeah. and, because I'm obvious, and because I'm obviously doing this now as a visual platform and we're watching it together, I'm sort of looking going, you know what? Yeah, from a visual experience, <laughs> it probably does need to look a little bit better, doesn't it? Like, like from me on my from me on my laptop, on my on, like, you know, while I've got it on the telly and Mrs. J's watching something on the TV and I'm playing on the laptop, it can look like however it wants. But if I'm trying to broadcast a, a, an, an entertaining show here, then yeah, let's maybe maybe raise the bar a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I think maybe that was what like the confusion as well. I remember when uh Work the Space posted up about the graphics, but obviously with some people. It's not gonna be this like it's not gonna mean the same thing as mm. it is for him as well, sort yeah. of thing. So I guess yeah, the graphics for me though, I'm I'm, I'm another one that I don't really care about the graphics until mm-hmm. I actually now care about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so the more I play, yeah. the more I play, the, I'm like on the sideline camera view and everything, and then you just start noticing little things like, oh, that ambulance truck is yeah. it's not where it should be. <laughs> I always just thought like it, it it for me it doesn't. It doesn't change the the actual playability yeah, it doesn't of the change game. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it certainly changes the visual perspective yeah, the of, of a stream. I guess, the, experience, the experience, yeah. exactly. I think if SI were to improve the immersion level via the video side of the game, like graphics and um, giving us first person uh, perspective of the manager, maybe. I mean, I've always asked myself. I I did ask SI this question. I go like, you've got. This little manager on the sidelines, and when I'm making these shouts, you can see this little avatar on the side making the hand gestures. I say, I mean, it's a small just thing. Why don't you just show me that? Yeah, I mean, it's a small little thing, but small thing, yeah, yeah. But show me that in a big PIP, for example. I'll be like, holy cow, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love, I loved it that when, and again, it's a, it's a fairly. Not, not a new thing, really, but I like seeing me shake hands with the opposition manager. I'm I mean, all there in my suit. I'm like, yeah, full yeah, of yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> gamers are full of themselves. They want to see themselves in the game. All right. Yeah, Let's yeah, yeah. It. For yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. I want to see myself sent to the stands. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to be banned <laughs> from the touchline. Oh, oh, Venga style. Away you go. Away you go. Venga style. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be able to say sh- bad things to the press. Okay. The, <laughs> the game doesn't have consequences. No, I, I, I've never had a send off i've never had a yeah, uh, yeah, sent yeah. to the stands i've never had uh i don't go for i don't go for any single press conference for the uefa champions league which mm. shouldn't happen in real life because in real life if you don't go for press conferences chances are they're gonna find your you club get fined yeah yeah you get because you get you get you get the touchline ban for arguing about var don't you or yeah. a bad decision to say See, oh, this is what I, this is what i was gonna ban. say wasn't this a thing before? Am I just imagining this? Like in Football Manager, you used to get banned. Like if you start complaining, complaining about yeah. complaining yeah, you, about the decision. 
And you know, why is that get, like sent off? The, but that's the not there no more. No, I'm written. pretty sure you don't get banned no more. I, I I have tried my best to get banned. I'm, I've tried my best to have a player revolt. You get once I turn the whole team against me, all my players are happy, <laughs> including the under 19s. You had to scroll down the dynamics page, though. Know? And I told my entire stream, I did it. I got the whole team unhappy. Look at this. The whole, all <laughs> now I'm waiting to get fired. Yeah, yeah. It didn't yeah, come. Yeah. It so, didn't come. Someone oh, said no. someone said something really interesting to me a while back, and I'd never even thought about it. They went, see how when you got the press conference, why is there no press? <laughs> 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 I'm in an empty room by myself. <laughs> yeah, it's actually quite... Just these empty chairs. Yeah. I'm just like, why is that really good point? <laughs> no, it's, it's bad enough. They've got empty chairs, empty table. I'm not there. There's no yeah, press there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when oh, you go to the man. dressing room... There's no one in the dressing room except cabinets, lockers, and they show you, you know, like, your lower league side, you might have one table, <laughs> one light. Like, like, but towel but on now, the floor. Like, people are laughing and be like, oh, come on, that can't be in the game. But this is what you're talking about, managing ex uh, expectations and how SI could be actually influencing that because it's like, they did add that into the game though. Like the, that sort of the new graphics of being in a change room because it's now supposed to make it feel like a change room and the press room to make it feel like a press room. But to really make it feel like a press room, there's you got to be press, press there. <laughs> I mean, sort especially of thing. as well, if you're doing these long-term saves and you go from yeah. one person in the press to suddenly like you're 20 seasons in and it's rammed, that would be great. Especially I, if that one person still there yeah. really hated you from day one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, I, it would be nice. I mean, I'm like, okay, I don't like, you know, this player face, you know, the reactions at halftime, you got all, you got to, you got to look at the screen and go start from the clockwise, six o'clock, and then go around 12 o'clock, and then you go around to three o'clock. All the reactions, right? Why can't they show the... I mean, it would be nice, right? It's a small thing, like players walking into the dressing room. You see one player, one player, <laughs> one player, aggressive. But, I mean, I don't understand the reaction roused. Mm, Is, yeah. Was he sleeping that I had to rouse him up or was he excited? Rouse. See, oh, <laughs> see, that's another thing that needs a glossary and what these emotions mean because that, that that is actually pretty serious as well. Mm. And things like, you know, you've got the little gestures that you can do. Like these mm. things that you can hover over it, but it just gives you like a very brief thing. And even that might even confuse you even more. <laughs> but it's like these things, yeah, I think these things, that's another thing for the glossary is that I don't actually know what some of these things. I'm just looking for motivated and stuff like that. That's all I, I'm looking for. Even again, context on this one. Uh, this happened to me the, the other day. Two-legged European uh, match, okay. We, were th we won 3 nil in the first leg. Okay, second leg, we go in at half time, one goal down. So we're still 3-1 up overall. I've said, look, I'm a bit upset. <gasps> hey, we, we need to be doing better. They're like, what? What you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I know we're still we're still going through, but come on, like let's do this properly. Like you, there's yeah. there's no sort of like yeah. Some of the reaction sometimes. See, like, this is uh, another. This is one thing about Foot Manager. Like I think the interaction things is a bit um gamey. If that <laughs> if that makes sense, sort of thing. I don't. Oh, always yeah. positive. Always yeah, positive. Like, or always yeah, negative. So yeah. like there's just just certain things that's always going to spark the same reaction, sort mm. of thing. Like. People will tell you, if you're two, no up, don't do this. If you're this and that, don't do that. But I do feel that this is where each player's personality and things should show more. And your Because your team has a personality. I'm pretty sure when you do your squad overall, the game shows your squad personality. Like, I think that your team talk should go hand in hand with this sort of thing. So, for example, if your team, if certain players aren't ambitious or whatever, they shouldn't be motivated by some of the things that you say. And you might have to get through to certain players differently, I feel, should be part of the game. Yeah, but the thing is this, right? How much of that should go into affecting the result? You see, this is the... Yeah, no, maybe not it, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no so not because... much. Not much, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> how, how, how about, how yeah. about something like this, right? So, so, you're, right, so you're in a big, you're in a big, a big, you're in a big, a big match, right? Okay, it's half time. It's a tight game. Okay, you're going there. You go, like, you give the team a bit of confidence. Go, right, we can win this, Okay. Some of the players go, oh, you know, we can do this. Is there any scope here, right, where you want your captain to be going around, going, come, we can do it, like getting like the players who are like a little bit unsure, going like, come on, it's time to get a goal as well. And then the, the players go like, you know what, right, yeah, he's got us going as well. Like, so they react off the back of other reactions of the players. Uh, yeah. It'd be nice, but... It, it would happen in real life, wouldn't it? Yeah, 
this is where I come, it comes back to, right? How much of this do you want rolling into the match engine? Because mm. the thing is, yeah. SI, the game is basically a simulation of results. So the match engine is the predominant driver here. So all yeah. these other stuff, probably won't have that big of an effect. Like, you know, you talked about dynamics and interaction. When you come to my stream, I ignore players. I ignore yeah. press conferences. <laughs> I ignore team talk. I ignore this. Because... Don't tell me that. No, please stop. Just, just stop there. Because actually, in these tests, though, I do take these things... Because that, again, in my head, from what SI may have may or may have or may not told me, I do think these things play effect. So like, when my player scores a hat trick, he's getting praise. I'm praising oh, players. No, 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 no. I'll do no, the no. just in tactics lesson just to make sure. So, someone said that. Sure that's it's not a one 0 it's a two 0 <laughs> Someone said that to me a while back. Like someone had scored a hat trick and they went, "Oh, praise him." I went, "Nah." <laughs> he's supposed to do no, that. I mean, I, mean, I mean, I know he's supposed to, but I don't know. Something in my childhood, I didn't get enough praise, so he's not getting it either. Yeah, I don't get it. I the thing is, the game. I know people. If oh, you come, don't tell you, me that. <laughs> you will notice, right? People come in like, "Oh, don't you praise players for training?" I'm going like, "You want me to click each one of them and every week just praise them?" <laughs> this is what they're supposed to be doing. You need to praise yeah. them. I say, "What the hell's wrong with you?" you that's a, no, that's one. The game. That is one. When people saw that, like, why don't you do that in? in stream i was like this is long <laughs> what am i doing that for <laughs> as solo and then skin creators got a bit creative creative with it and then obviously now you can do multi-selection to that sort of stuff yeah, but, but it's but i still don't i yeah i just don't praising your players for training for doing no, well in training time, it's like it's literally their job the only yeah, time well a player match, gets that's what i want <laughs> the only time a get, player gets praised from me is he wins the balloon d'Or. yeah yeah, that's well, about and it. Then he tells you, and then he tells you doesn't care. Does I don't. Just, oh, thanks. I'll be going now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, I, wow. I, nah, I, see, I, I got a bit OTT with this. Again, a bit gamey, just to get into his uh, the player's favorite personnel. Even sometimes as well. It's like sometimes I'm in there. I'm like, wait, I've never spoken to you. <laughs> Why do you like me? I have. <laughs> you I want to be his friend, not yours. <laughs> I speak to my players all the time with my hand. I don't <laughs> talk to the hand. I'm a, I don't react to anything in the game. If players can, yeah, okay, the yeah, only yeah. time, the only time I have is when, um, okay, like, you know, to be fair, I had the whole team, including my youth players, unhappy. So I did have to talk to at least one player. Um, but I will find and identify a player. But it's rare. I mean, I don't, okay, I'm not going to lie about what I do in the game. I mean, people come yeah, on my yeah. streams. I'm not going to say, yeah, I, I always talk to players. I don't. I don't do it when I'm not playing, when I'm not on camera and I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do something. I'm not going to lie about the game, like how I play I hate, it. So. I hate this conversation. <laughs> uh. It's like, I, I legit, like, if one person gets upset, I start panicking. Then it's like five players are knocking on my door. I'm like, oh, now nah, we're going to lose everything. Now, nah, well done. <laughs> just, just, just click the button that scores. I'll sort it, lads. Don't worry. And then they're like, all right, cool. But I do like that, though, Daljit, because I think it's, what Full Manager has done well is that you can sort of play the game in the way that, that you, you want, want to. to. So if you, yeah. if you think that these, if these things are important to you personally, then absolutely do it because it might not have the greatest effect, but it will feel nice that if, if having a good morale is what you want and you can work your way up by praising these people to earn that morale, that can actually be rewarding and pleasing for you. Obviously for us, like we don't really care about that sort of stuff. So we could just play without having, having to care about that. Now, the issue would be if these things did matter, it would mean that every yeah. single player that plays on a would have to, then that's yeah, an extra a hour or two every day. Yeah, yeah and then it beco now it's yeah, becoming it a problem because now we all, yeah, now it's a yeah. bit too much sort of thing. That's why yeah, so I will not do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not against that, to be honest. Because a lot but of I players... Like, was... I do like the fact that it made me, makes me panic every single time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't praise the team during the match because I've never, ever, ever had success with it. We could be 2-0 up and I'd be like going, hey, everything's going great. And then they all go, what are you talking to? Just like, they, they just down tools. And I'm like, right, no, no praise for you anymore then. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself this question. I mean, the developers are probably in their 50s. I mean, around, yeah, they're around my age right now. So they, they have been in their 50s. And you got to ask yourself, the, the large bunch of people who play the game are probably also, you know, quite old. And, you know, we don't have all the time in the world to play football manager. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. I don't have time to spend, you know, it used to take us two hours to finish the season. Now it takes us maybe a day to finish the season. Yeah. So... I'm not going to spend all that time clicking every single, cross every um, T and dot every I in the game just to get 
a one nil result. Okay, people want yeah. to play the game in different ways, and there are lots of people who play the game on commentary mode, and they're probably going to go like, "Hey, uh, I, you know," and there might be others who prefer the development side of the game, and you know, they 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 do the development side of the game. So this is the beauty about the game; you can approach it in different ways. It's it's going to yeah. meet cater to your needs. So if you are the if you are the uh, micromanager, go ahead, have fun. Okay, there's you know. Just understand that if you're going through a bad run, you can change your style of play too. Yeah, yeah. Which is something I'm just so scared of as well. <laughs> when things are going wrong, is that? Like, but I know this tactic, changing it to something that I don't know, that's scary. Mm. Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> in the immortal words of Yoda, trust the force, my young Padawan. Trust the force. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that back to that thing of what you say like master your this and master your that and we've spoke about uh what formations don't you trust and why you don't trust it is that thing that a 4231 a 433 oh i can just get i can do that all day different versions different variations all day now tell me to do something like a 343 oh i'm struggling <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm struggling but it's because i haven't mastered it and then for me though it would be silly of me to then not get results and complain or not getting results with something that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And just, do you know what I mean? And that's what, again, what other people are doing is they're not getting something, but it's because they don't understand something. And then they think, <laughs> they think it's, it's not because of them, it's because of something else. But it's really, also a big change as well. And if you're going from, like you say, like a 4 2 3 1 to a 3 4 3, that's a big change <laughs> mid season, isn't it? Like it's not, a, it's not a tweak. It's like going, right, we are scrapping this. And we're trying this, and everyone's going. When Why? did we practice it? You should already know this. <laughs> <laughs> <Not familiarity. laughs> Actually, oh, of tactical familiarity isn't such a big deal if you think about it. I mean, in the game, yeah. right? The only things you have to worry about, you got these three tactic slots, right? The only things you have to worry about are mentality, with uh, pressing, creative freedom, and one other thing. And the thing is that if you set your mentality for all your tactics to be positive, and then you set your width to be narrow, and you set your passing length to be short, and you set your tempo to be a certain level, do you know that if when you change tactics, your team is already familiar with mentality, width, passing, and tempo? So, yeah, chances yeah. are, mm. the only thing you need to worry about in the game, right, okay, is positional familiarity. So, you can change tactics, but just for heaven's sakes, I mean, okay, you know, I, don't use me as an example because I played Neymar <laughs> as a central defender. But <laughs> if you don't know why I use Neymar as a central defender, don't do it. <laughs> but in most cases, I'll advise people, play the player if he knows the position. That way he makes mm -hmm. less mistakes. It's worse playing somebody who doesn't know the position. Yeah. So like, you know, I mean, there be the exception, of course, of the DM or the inverted wingback. I think DMs are natural. Almost, you can play them as inverted wingbacks tomorrow. It's my favorite thing to do it's in the, the world. It's this, yeah, I was going to say, that is my... I remember I had the Arsenal save, and it's just like, the, the main thing is like, for the Zinchenko role, to replicate this, we just cannot buy a fullback. We have mm. to buy a midfielder, and then we're just going to... So it's still that thing in it, a search for the star. We've, we've, well, yeah. We found a creative midfielder who wasn't good enough to be our creative midfielder because obviously we're Arsenal, so you, you're touching on the elite. You kind of have to be elite creator, but you're definitely good enough to be a progressive <laughs> left back Jeez. and invert into midfield. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. positional play. Again, patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a positional play feature. Again, like, you know, if you want to play a halfback, Find somebody who knows how to play the central defender position. Yeah, you want yeah, to find yeah. a roaming playmaker, find somebody who can play DM, CM, AMC. Now, chances mm -hmm. are he'll be able to play those roaming positions quite well too because he's also familiar with play. I'm not saying that this is something mm -hmm. that you have to do, but it helps. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. I think that seems a fairly fairly nice little way of wrapping it all up to be honest as well just like there is there is so much so much that we can just just keep chatting about and i think we'll have to get yeah. you back uh, yeah, the well, it's probably a little bit more a convenient episode. for you i reckon Dalgit, than, than more convenient for us. <laughs> the, the next time the next time i come back we'll just have to talk about funny things about the game that's it you know no serious yeah, stuff yeah, like, yeah, i yeah, just want to have 100%. a good laugh uh, yeah, yeah there's yeah, more yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Yeah, yeah we should say as well <laughs> by the way that about more Maybe maybe not this time. It was about a year ago. About a year ago, we all met up, which was which was brilliant, right? We all. Got oh there. yes. Like I actually got I got a message from from Dalgit, said, "Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming to the UK." 
right? And uh, are you going to be about for these days? And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't really know because like I'm <laughs> just I'm kids, like, I haven't really planned stuff. But you know, when you look at that and go, I mean, he's travelled half the world. Like, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could just get on a train to London and go and see him for a pint, right? Because he's like, oh, like meet up, meet him in London for a pint. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we could probably swing it, right? And then eventually we all work out why Dal just coming over and like <laughs> then we all get the same invite as well. It's like, and I was like, so, oh, I can be there for that day, believe on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we all got nice and hammered. Yeah. Oh, Even that I take time. serious, isn't it? Like, was like, I didn't know he was going or anything. And it's just like, wait, you live on the other side of the house? Yeah. <laughs> <Just> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Oh it's, man. Uh, was yeah, there's, there's a there's a lovely picture of the three of us in the uh in the yeah. change rooms thing, which was was pretty cool. So that was quite nice. It was nice to sort of sit and hang out and uh and not just not just talk football manager, but just talk like real life football and real yeah, life yeah, yeah. real life to be honest, and, and have a pint and a bit of a a bit of a catch up, so yeah, that's we'll the, definitely have. That's to do the thing, that, isn't it? Bit. Like behind our, our our cameras, all of us have heavy full manager conversation. Put all of us in one room together in real life. We're not talking. For it. Not <laughs> at all. We're, at, we're, we're there. We're mm-hmm. actually in football manager, but we now decide to go quiet about everything that we've been saying about football manager. Mm. Yeah, but <laughs> it's it's like me is like, oh, I used to complain about the woodwork guy, and he's right. Here. I'll stay quiet. I'll stay quiet. Mm. Yeah, I'll wait no, till I go was, on Twitter. Yeah, but it was like, but let's see. It was one of those things. It was, it was just nice to sort of just meet in person and, and catch yeah. up. And it was, uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to try and do something, but. If we can't do it in person, Dalgit, we'll get you back on the show uh, in, in podcast form. But if people want to find you, then we want to find a bit more Bust the Net content and streams. Where can people find you? I mean, you can find me on the forums, it's Rashidi, and then on YouTube, Bust the Net, on Twitch, Bust the Net. Easy to find me. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Nice. And Aaron, if people want to find more content from us, where can they find it? They can. <laughs> <laughs> this is four weeks up. in a row he's going to ruin this <laughs> show on, on socials but it is very I was going to say very important we do appreciate the support that's been shown on this channel as well especially over on Patreon which you can find at www.patreon.com forward slash the FM show pod and there is some early access weekly episodes on there bonus episodes also you can get your name in some sort of credits as well and submit your tactics to the tactics garage exactly i think we've clocked it there's about 30 hours worth of extra content on there so go and get yourselves over a free weekly episode every single week as part of patreon and of course the weekly episodes are public as well you get those early access and as aaron says follow the show the fm show pod if you've got an email you want to send to us it's the fm show pod at gmail.com if you've watched the video on youtube give it a like hit the subscribe button if you want to follow on all of your podcast platforms do that as well but you know what I think that's a show. I think that's pretty good, to be honest. So I'm going to say that was episode 37 of the FM show, hosted by myself, Tony Jameson. My co-host was Aaron Falloon, a.k.a. RDF Tactics, our wonderful guest, Dalgit, Bust the Net. Everyone, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye for now. Want to learn even more about Football Manager? Subscribe to the Patreon. Just visit patreon.com slash the FM show pod. Don't forget to rate and review and follow along on the socials at the FM show pod.